third, Morton Serum. And skip, Christian Serum. Ladies and gentlemen, our two competing teams on sheet B. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please join with us in welcoming four good curlers, good friends, and good neighbors, the United States national champions from Superior, Wisconsin. Represented by lead Bob Christman. Second, Tom Locken. Third, Bill Strum. And skip, Bob Nichols. Providing a lot of exciting curling during the week here in Winnipeg to defend the title won by their fellow countrymen last year, uh, this year's Swedish champions from the Eurozone Home Curling Club in Stockholm. Here is lead Boa Karlman. Second, Fred Ritterstad. Playing third, Svante Udman. And the Swedish tip, Tom Schaefer. The USA and Sweden, our semifinalists on sheet D, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, everyone. The ISIS team, the Rocks, are ready to all our teams. Good luck and good curling. Canada versus Norway, Sweden against the United States. The Swedes beat the Americans 9-7 in round robin play thanks to some superb shot making by Tommy Schaefer. As I mentioned, Canada had little difficulty in its opening match, beating Norway 14-3. Canada is favored, most of the experts agree, Sweden and the United States is a toss-up. To describe the semi-final action for you, let's now go upstairs to Don Chevrier and Don Duga. Thank you, Don. Well, Doogie, Norway did lose 14-3 to Canada, but that was in the very first round. I don't think that's very indicative now because the Norwegians are a much better team. Well, they started off very slowly, Don, losing their first two games, but they've improved steadily throughout the week, and it is not going to be an easy task for Canada today. Well, they had to fight. Norway did through a playoff to get fourth place here and make the Silver Broom playoff, their first ever, as Don Whitman has told you. And last night, Scotland had last rock for the first five ends and blanked them. And as so often happens, that policy can backfire, and it did. Well, they played very cautiously throughout. Uh, the big thing about Sanderson uh, last night, Don, in the playoff, he did not have his draw weight. And it plagued him throughout the game. He had chances to maybe lie two in the first five ends, but he would go through the house. Norway would hit and roll out, and they'd end up blanking the end. Well, this is the sixth end of play, and here's the last rock, indicative of the weight problems that Jimmy Sanderson from Scotland was having. He's back for his first silver broom in seven long years out of Edinburgh. He came up short, so after blanking five, he allowed the Norwegians to steal one and go ahead at that point, finally, one to nothing. The Scots got a point back at the seventh end to make it one all. Now in the eighth end, they have three rocks remaining, and this was the undoing of Scotland right here. Norwegians play a very aggressive type of game, Don. They like to attack all the time, and there was a chance he could play the intern draw around the corner guard, but he felt by playing this raise, he could get it directly behind the two guards and maybe slip both of them in. Good control of his weight here. You'll see he just gets by, just catches the corner of that rock, and just moves it directly in behind that corner guard. This is the eighth end in a 1-1 tie, and you know the crowd last night was almost 8,000 for a playoff involving two teams other than Canada, which is simply amazing here, the attendance in Winnipeg, the enthusiasm for the 1978 Silver Broom. And Sanderson in this particular shot, Don, was really playing the takeout, but he threw it a little bit wide. He actually pushed it out there. He wasn't having a very good night. Willie Sanderson, Jimmy's brother, of course, pulled a muscle in the morning round. They played with three. That didn't help their cause very much either. No, it certainly doesn't because uh, it's tough enough to win with four, but with three, it puts a lot of pressure on the uh, front end of the team. 
Well, here is the break that Norway needed with the last rock coming up in the eighth end, lying one already. This was the shot by Skip Christian Sorum of Norway that broke the playoff for fourth place wide open. And then like Sanderson, uh, he didn't miss too many chances to uh, get two points. He has good control of his draw weight, and this was Scotland's undoing. There it was. On the rings for a count of two, the biggest count of the entire game. That made it three to one, and Norway went on to post a four to one victory over Scotland's Jimmy Sanderson and advance against Canada in this playoff today. I might add this Christian Sorum rink was one of two to beat Jimmy Ursel last year in Karlstad. They've beaten some top teams here. They'll prove very tough, I'm sure, for Canada's Ed Lukowicz this afternoon. So our main coverage will be Canada-Norway, along with the U.S. and Sweden. We'll get to it in just a moment live here in Winnipeg. Up here where men are mining electricity, the new goal of an energy short world. Toughness is a way of life. Here at the James Bay Hydroelectrics Project, on a new frontier, two-thirds of the way up James Bay. Here where it can get so cold, the air in the skating rink has to be heated to keep the ice from cracking. 55... Here where roads are built for heavy equipment and severely exercise the suspension and frames of late duty service vehicles. Here where toughness is a measure of a man and his equipment. This is where Chevrolet is proving again beyond doubt. Chevrolet trucks are built to stay tough. Make sure your truck is Chevrolet tough. Well, here we are for the semifinals live from the Winnipeg Arena, leading to a sudden death showdown for the Silver Broom tomorrow. Of course, we'll have that for you, too, live on CBC television, that game to be televised in Europe and the United States. Here's Dale Johnson, the second for Canada. The Norwegians are lying one, straddling the eight-foot circle. He's playing the takeout. Wouldn't mind a roll across to the left behind the only corner guard out in front. But he'll hit it just about flush and stay right there at the 12 foot. So Canada lies one. Don, there's something very ominous. I hate to mention it, that you've noticed about the yellow rocks on sheet B. That's right, uh, Don. All week, uh, the team shooting the yellow rocks, which is Canada in this particular game, have not won with shooting the yellow rocks. So we'll, uh... <laughs> Let's hope that changes right now. Here's Eichel Ramsdale, the second for the Norwegian team. And they've played very, very well. As I said, they had a shaky start. They bounced right back to... As you know, make the playoffs for the first time in Silver Broom history. They've been close on several occasions, but this time they finally made it. And, of course, the first-place team, Canada, plays fourth, Norway, and second and third, the U.S. and Sweden playoff. That's the system. Had a team gone unbeaten here, this would have been just a one-game playoff in the semifinal. So Mike Chernoff now will settle into the hack. He shoots third rocks, skips the Canadian team, the Briar champions from Medicine Hat, Alberta. Don, they're playing it very wide open, and they'll do that for maybe two or three ends. The ice looks very keen and running very straight. Norway has the last rock in this first end, so... Chernoff's throwing big weight at this. He's got it. This Norwegian team is... Uh considerably younger on average than the Canadian team. Skip Christian Storm is 26. His brother Morton plays 30. He's 24. Ramsdale the second 23. And the old man is Gunnar Milan, who's 30. Whereas Mike Chernoff is 41 years of age. By the way, he'll be the chairman of the organizing committee for the 1980 Briar in Calgary. Lives in Calgary. Commutes to medicine has to join this team throughout the winter. This is Morton Sorum now. He's playing the hit on that rock, you see. He'll have a piece of it. He'll get a roll, but it'll be too much. He's out of play. But just the one remains, and Norwegian's still out in front as we are in the first end of these two sudden-death semifinal games. <laughs> Canada finished 7-2, as did the United States, but because the Canadians beat the Americans, they got first place. U.S. second, Sweden third, and Norway won the playoff against Scotland to finish in fourth place. The Norwegians were 5-4 and four on the week. Don, that's their best finish ever. Uh, they've never been in uh, the playoffs, although they were involved in one uh, tiebreaker for a playoff in 1970. Well, you've talked before, Don, about how important it is for a team to stick together. This is their third straight appearance in the Silver Broom, and it's paying off for them. 
Oh, there's no question. And uh, even next year will be a big year for them. If they stay together, they've done very, very well in this uh, Silver Broom. And every time you go to a Silver Broom, you learn more and more. So they're going to be a factor in years to come. Well, here on the first day in draw weight is always tricky. And they're staying right out, turn out, so and hoping it'll dig in toward the back. Gorham's going to give it a scrub, and yes, he's a bit heavy. He's off the back ring. So nothing in the house, and just the one out in front on the left is third. Mike Sturdoff has completed his two rocks for Canada. Well, the bad thing about that shot, uh, they've shown uh, Sorum the line now, and it's just a matter of weight. The rock didn't curl very much. Norway has won the toss. They have last rock here in the first end. And once again, this rock is moving rather swiftly down that same path as Eddie Lukowicz now will try to encourage it to get off the 12 foot at the back. Winds up at exactly the same spot, just off. They went to school too well on that. It was identical. Yes, it's just a question of weight there. The rock does not throw very much in that particular spot. And of course, Lukowicz is going down to uh, try to get it around that corner guard, and he'll take off a little bit of weight. And if he takes off a bit, Don, it could curl in around that guard. Well, Lukowicz has become the first Canadian high school champion to go on to win a Briar. He won that back in 1962. It was Briar, of course, a couple of weeks ago at the Pacific Coliseum in Vancouver. Former Saskatchewan curler used to curl with Rick Folk, one of his chief rivals. He finished second at a tie with Bernie Sparks in the 78 Briar. And here he is. They call him Fast Eddie, now out of Medicine Hat, Alberta. But he's eased up a little bit on the weight. This is getting pretty he's, sleepy he's, as it comes along. It's he's got a nice weight. they got to go on it, though. He ever gets it by, he's got a fine rock. He's there. Top of the 12 foot. It'll be partially open, though, to the Norwegian skip Christian Sorum. That rock only curled about four inches, Don, from where they took the broom, so it runs very straight there. And just watching Christian uh, Soren here, he's taken about the same ice, maybe a couple inches less to hit that rock, so he wants to peel it and roll off. He'd like to blank this end. We have three rocks left. Sorum is two. Lukowicz has one for Canada. You see the first end of play here in a sudden death semifinal for the Winnipeg Arena. And with today's crowd, the attendance will go over the 80,000 mark for the week. Tickets, as a matter of fact, uh, are being uh, traded off, if available at all, on a local radio station here in Winnipeg. A number to call if you have spare tickets. They are that much in demand. There weren't many calls offering tickets today. <laughs> I think Christian's just going to catch a corner of this. That's all he had to do. He got rid of it. He's going to roll across the house. And that is off the back. Still in play, though, but off the ring. Although the way it finished up there, Mike Chernoff decides, nope, he's going to leave it there. Now it's been pushed off by Morton Sorum. So just the one out in front with a rock each here in the first end. Lukovic would just like to add maybe about a foot more weight, get him to brush it all the way down. It started to do a little bit of curling once it uh, came abreast of that rock on the left-hand side there. And if he can get it just around there, he could catch a piece of that eight foot. Not very much ice being given on that straight run down the left side as you see it. The ice after a few ends, Don, will start swaying, but uh, usually in the first four ends, it's uh, freshly pebbled. Uh, it'll stay straight for the first four ends, and after it's curled a bit, uh, it'll start moving a bit more. This is Eddie's last shot of the end. Norway has the final rock to come, and this one has got a fair amount of weight. They're just scrubbing it lightly to keep it clean. He may be a little strong. Let's see. It's got kind of a dead handle on that rock, Don. It's not turning. Now it's starting to curl, but I think he may be a bit heavy. Yes, he is. Put he too much on it. He's come through. He added, uh, because his first shot stopped at the top of the 12 with some pretty strenuous sweeping, he added a bit too much. So, undoubtedly, the Norwegian skip will elect to blank this first day. He's blanking it, Don, but you see where uh, his brother's holding the broom there, and he's going to throw it down that particular side of the ice because nobody's throwing a rock over there, and he'll learn something from this rock. See how it reacts, whether it curls or whether it falls. You'll see him. He'll stay right down behind it and watch it all the way. His brother is kneeling down in the house, having a look at it come, and it's starting to curl, so... i tell you, Don, a couple of years ago, teams from Norway, A, would not blank an end, and if they did, they certainly wouldn't bother to follow the path of it. They've come a long, long way. No score after one end, a blank by Norway's Christian Sorum. And 
So now let's pick up the action in the other game. This is the United States and Sweden. This is the uh, first skip rock by the American skip Bobby Nichols. He has last rock here in the first end against Tom Schaefer of Sweden. He's trying for the hit, the inside roll. He'll have it. There it goes into the four foot ring, and he's lying two. Third shot you saw at the top of the eight foot ring adjacent to the American second stone. Now there's a chance here for Schaefer if he should get the roll to perhaps steal this end on and he can tuck inside those two at the top of the eight foot. Well those two at the top of the eight foot are staggered so he couldn't play a straight back raise if Schaefer gets the roll. And you're right he is going to try to hit it a little bit on the inside. The broom is just about in the center of the rock so this particular piece of ice right here runs very very straight. Tommy Schaefer's been here before. He was in the front end of the Shell Scariest team that upset Harvey Mazinki and Regina five years ago in 1973. Now back is the skip of the Swedish champions in 78. His last rock, Nichols still has one to come in the first end. He kind of stumbled coming out of the hack and delivering that rock, Don, but he's got good line. I don't think he's going to get the inside roll. Not the way he wanted it. A little bit. And it stops there in the open. So that's a break for Bobby Nichols, who conceivably, with a hit and stick, can pick up two in the very first end. And you know, you don't, in this kind of competition, you very seldom get a chance to score two or more, and it's particularly in the first end. So this is a big shot for Bobby Nichols. Don, you know, in the game they played the fifth round, Sweden beat the United States. It was fairly tight, 9-7. to seven. The Americans losing to Sweden and to Canada. Sweden losing three games to Canada, Scotland, and Italy, which was the surprise, certainly, of Silver Broom Week. The Italians coming through with a win. Bobby Nichols, of course, has taken over the rink of Bud Somerville, who had open heart surgery recently. He's out of Superior, Wisconsin. They're waiting for this one. The line looks pretty good. If he can get a piece enough to stay, let's see. It's going to be a little tough for him. He's quiet enough. He's there. He's there. He gets two. And the Americans get a good jump on Sweden. And you see the fans from North Dakota, Minnesota, many of which are up here applauding that shot by Bobby Nichols. So there it is after one end. We'll be back with more from Winnipeg in just a moment. See what's new today. Chevrolet introduces a new kind of space vehicle, the new size Malibu wagon. It has a new and very convenient two-way hatch gate and an amazing amount of interior space. And you can load the new size Malibu wagon with the tailgate down or with it up. And when you finish loading, there's still ample room for family and friends. Chevy's new size Malibu wagon, it's the kind of friend a modern family can use. Last night, I went out with a car. I usually prefer unassuming cars or conservative cars. But Monte Carlo changed me with the way it looked, the way it felt, the way it handled. And what we like about Monte Carlo now is the way it fits the both of us. 1978 Monte Carlo. Because you are what you drive. The brush versus the broom. The controversy rages on. Nine brooms, seven brushes in action in the semifinal. Ray Turnbull, a curler, an umpire, and an instructor. Which is best? John, nice question. That's been a topic of conversation all week, as you know. I'm afraid I'm still from the old school. I honestly feel in my heart that the, the broom is certainly as effective uh, uh, or, or more effective on the, on the faster shots, the takeouts, and I think as effective on the uh, draws as well. They get on the stone quicker. And they, uh, they can go faster. When a brusher starts to go very quickly, he loses control of his body. However, I will admit that uh, on the draws, the brush never does leave the ice. But I'm, I'm afraid uh, I'm from that old school. And I also miss the rhythm and the beat. And this is the thing that made the game grow, Witty. You know, the kids like to the hammer swack, that. Swack. That's right. It's like almost like watching paint dry out here. <laughs> <laughs> Ray, one final question about that brush. The uh, international curling body made a ruling regarding the brushing. Yes, they did, Don. They, uh, as you know, the rule, the old rule, or the rule uh, before uh, last Sunday, was that you had to go across the face of the stone. Now they, uh, they've changed it and said that you could sweep or brush any way you wish, as long as you do not leave any droppings in front of the, the stone. I don't know, Don, it's a dangerous rule. Uh, the umpire, as you know, doesn't have a lot of uh, uh, authority until called upon. So 
how can he police that, you know? We hope you don't have to be called upon this afternoon or tomorrow afternoon either. Okay, here's a man who favors the broom. What do you think, Don Dugan? Well, I'd have to agree with uh, Ray Turnbull. Uh, the brush never leaves the ice on uh, draw shots, and, and that's correct. Uh, I think the corn broom uh, really adds to the game of curling. You get the rhythm and the pounding of the brooms. It's much more dramatic than a, a, than a brush. I'll get back to that in a moment, Don. Right now, we're watching the Norwegians get a good piece of that Canadian stone and a, a roll. There's Chernoff trying to get that one off. It's going to hang on to the 12 foot for a bite way over on the left hand side. There it is, just on the rings, as they have uh, half this end completed now. The third rock's coming up. I do know, though, that overall, you favor the push broom over the corn broom, I think, generally and fairly. Do you not? Well, Ray made a statement about uh, on a takeout, the body, uh, when using the brushes out of position. But really, on a takeout, if the rock is going fast, uh, a brush or a corn broom is uh, not very effective. Because if it's going fast, uh, nothing right. can hold it up. So I think overall, the brush is a little bit better than the corn broom. But it detracts from the game of curling. The fastest sweeper we've ever seen, of course, is Ronnie Schindel, who went right through the other end of the ice into the scoreboard, trying to catch a heavy takeout in the last round of the Briar. Yeah. But not all have the speed and the balance and the agility that he has to follow a takeout down the ice. Right now, let's see Mike Chernoff playing this very tough shot on outside ice. They haven't been here in this game. It's just the second end. But Canada is concerned about this potential two count for Norway if this rock stays around. Well, it's a difficult area to hit in. You'll see the rock should fall, but I think he's going to pull on that front one. Didn't fall enough for him to get it. He's opened it up anyway, but now trading shots all the way through. Norway is set up for a potential two here in the second end. They blanked the first to retain last rock advantage into end two. No score in this one. And the other, as you saw, the United States' Bobby Nichols made a soft tap and stay to get two and lead Sweden 2 nothing as they're also in the second end. We'll bring you coverage of both games today. The difficulty here for Canada, Don, is that uh, Norway gets this rock in around the corner guard perfect. Uh, what do you do? Do you gamble and go try to follow him down, or do you hit that one that's in the open on the 12 foot? Well, that's a decision they'll have to make uh, when they see where this one finishes up. Oh, they third Morton Storm, and he's a little tough for weight. They're going to have to work on this one hard. It's coming over near that guard out in front, and this could benefit the Canadians in terms of the steal. That's the kind of rock they like near the center line. If it bumps this and comes over, well, it did a little bit. That's a potentially very useful guard for the Canadians. However, first things first, I think Mike Chernoff wants to take care of that little biter. Worry about getting a rock in behind later on. Well, there's no question that he, he would like to hit and stick with this rock and force uh, Norway over on that side of the sheet and make him take out, and then they would go around the two guards. But if he rolls out here, uh, Norway will go around those two guards in front. Mike Chernoff, 41 years of age. He's a geologist. In the Briar, of course, in 1964, on the winning Briar team out of Alberta. This one is drifting out, but it'll make contact. He won't stick around, but he eliminates the Norwegian Rock. This crowd here uh, to Winnipeg, well, demand has been every bit for Capita as much as it was for the Grey Cup in Montreal, the Super Bowl in New Orleans. Uh, you simply can't accommodate all the people that want to be here. This rink normally holds a little bit over 10,000 for hockey, about 9,600 for curling with a few seats at the end taken out for the largest press bench I've ever seen. And just looking up in the standing room only crowd, Don, there's uh, maybe 30 or 40 people up there too, so it's uh, full to capacity. Well, I thought for a moment the cold snap that hit Winnipeg last night, it got down to about 10 below and is up to about zero or one or two above today it might affect the ice but this huge crowd here is the main factor in this ice behaving the way it has all week very mild earlier in winnipeg christian sorum here is asking morton sorum to uh, play the raised on and this is a, a very difficult shot because if he hits the rock he may drive it in the open and just leave canada an open hit I might have thought he, uh, at this stage, with the rock so close to center, try to clean those off, or else maybe duck in behind himself. Let's see what he's got here. It's hanging pretty wide for him right now. Now it starts to come a little bit. Well, he can't afford just to rub it, because I don't know whether his would get on the ring. No, he's well by, but I well think he may be a... too much weight. He's going to be heavy. Is he going to go through? Yep. Yes, he's off. They are both encountering weight difficulties in the first couple of ends. Well, in Morton's defense, you know, they're playing two shots, really. He's asking him to play a raise, so he's throwing just a fraction more weight than he would for a draw. 
rocket. And fortunately for him, the rock didn't curl and make contact with that one. And that's why he slipped through the house. Well, there's Bath Eddie shuffling on down the ice for his first rock. Remember, he does not have last rock here, but because they have the two near the center line, he can find his draw weight and get the right line on this. They've got a great opportunity. Now, Chernoff taps the head of the 12 foot. I wouldn't think he'd be unhappy if he came all the way behind there, up near the four. Well, he wants definitely to get behind those two rocks, but he does not want to go behind the T-line. No. He slips behind the T-line, uh, Norway will just simply follow him down. But it's pretty difficult to freeze to a rock when it's in front of the T-line. Just a question of weight. Now he calls them on. It's starting Ooh. to come way over. That rock, I think that rock picked up something. Now look at it curl. I'll tell you, he may be on that uh, Norwegian stone. Let's see where he rolls, where it rolls. Not far enough to be on the rings. I'll tell you, a little bit more, he might have hit that uh, flush and put it right up into the 12-foot. So again, they are battling this ice in the early ends, and we have not seen them mastered draw weight by any means. Well, that rock pulled a little more because Lukowicz had uh, what I think was perfect draw weight. He would have been in the four-foot area while Morton's arm was a little bit heavy, so it ran straighter. And Norway's going way out here now. I think they may be entertaining the thought of, of touching their own redstone up if they don't get it by. Well, this is not a bad call. If you can make contact with that rock and raise it straight back, the danger here for Christian is that he's going out quite a bit wider, and uh, it's a little bit heavier out there. It's also a pretty unfamiliar country. That's correct. And nothing is more difficult than drawing down the center and then playing a wide draw. Well, he's got a nice looking line. Just depends on his weight. Is he going to get it there? There it is. Up into the eight foot. Now that is pretty well covered up. There may be a little outturned view of it, Ruddy Lukovic, but uh, an easy shot by no means faces him right now as they each have a rock to go in the second end. Chernoff and Luka Rich are going to talk this one over. Well, what they're concerned about is how the Rock is going to react over there. Luka Rich is going to play takeout weight, and he wants to uh, make sure of the ice, because I think the ice will fall over on that side of the sheet. That roar you hear in the background is for a great hit and roll by Bobby Nichols of the United States. We'll keep you abreast of developments in that game. It's 2-0 for the United States, with the Americans now lying shot under cover in the second end. And here is the first big tester for Eddie Lukowicz of Canada in the second end with his last rock coming up. You'll see the broom that Chernoff is giving him. It's right on the edge of the rock, Don. So I would think that he's going to play pretty good weight, but not too heavy. Because if he plays too heavy, probably drift out on him. They yelled right away. Oh, they're going to have to go on this one. It's starting to fall off a bit now. It should fall if he's going to get by. No, he's, no, he's not. Gonna, he's going to wreck on the front one. Onto his own, and he hit it pretty good. It's going all the way back. So now the Norwegians have the chance to draw for a pair at the second end. Again, with uh, the rock by Christian Surum, is raised. He didn't know the ice up there. And for this shot by Eddie Lukovic, they weren't at all familiar with how it would react. Well, as I said earlier, Don, the danger of throwing one down the center line, then one on outside, you get a little bit confused because it's heavier outside. So I think they're just discussing what kind of weight that he has to throw down that center line where it's a little bit quicker. This Norwegian team has curled very, very well. As we said later in the week, uh, the back end, these two Sorum brothers were hitting 94, 95% in a couple of games, and that's pretty impressive curling. Well, you know, if you're gonna win the World Championship, you have to get up the odd game up in the 90s, and if you can curl consistently 90, I'm you're going to win the silver broom. Here's Sorum's attempt to draw for a pair. He's throwing pretty big weight. He's playing the in turn. We're coming off center, so. His weight's going to be okay. It's two for Norway, Don. He'll bump his own up and take a pair. Norway made the first blank end pay off. And they jump into a 2 0 lead over Canada after two ends. Let's check in now with Don Whitman. Well, Don, a man who would much sooner be out there playing than watching, I know, is Jimmy Sanderson, the skip of the Scottish rink. You lost 4 1 in that playoff last night. Your emotions reached a peak yesterday when France scored a victory over Norway, and you won. You had a shot at the playoff, and then they went downhill last night. Yep, uh, we thought if we, might, we got the 
We thought when getting the lucky break to get into the playoffs, that would set our game back together again. It didn't work out that way at all. You opted in your final two games to go with only three men. Uh, your brother Willie uh, suffered a muscle injury. Uh, was there any reason you opted to go with just three? It basically, it was simply because the three of it, the four of us have played together for about eight years now, and uh, we felt to bring in a man, number one, it could upset our balance a wee bit. Number two, it's a hell of a pressure to put on a chap coming into a competition like this at the end of the week. You know, I wouldn't like to come in at that stage. And we, we played so well against Switzerland with the three. I thought, we'll try it for the playoff. But it didn't work out, and that's it. Jimmy, when you lost your first two games on opening day, a lot of people were ready to write you off, but you Scots are fighters, aren't you? Oh, I'd never write off a Scotsman. <laughs> never write off a Scotsman. No, we just we realised the first day was going to be tough with all the ceremonies, etc., etc. But we got stuck in and we strung four games together and we're back in the hunt. We were right in at the hunt, but we just slipped up in the playoff and that was it. Maybe next year? Hope so. Hope okay. so. Thank you. Jimmy Sanderson, thanks very much for chatting with us. Jimmy Sanderson, the skip of the Scottish rink, and we'll return to action in the semifinals right after this. Bill and I love our apartment, but all we really want is a house. Our house, sure. Two salaries help. But it hurts us, too, because of taxes. Then Dad mentioned how investors could help us, and an investor's man dropped by the apartment. He created a sound financial plan to help us get our house a lot sooner. He told us it's based on something called the four cornerstones. Everyday money, guaranteed long-term money, growth money as a hedge against inflation, and family protection money through life insurance. The plan was simple. A plan that allowed us to pay ourselves first. We knew we'd made the right move for the house we wanted, for the tax savings we wanted. This is Don Chevrier with Don Dugan and Don Whitman back with you live from the jam-packed Winnipeg Arena as Norway has taken a 2-0 lead over Canada into the third end now. We're watching the lead rocks being played. There's a Norwegian stone near the top of the house in the 12-foot circle. This is the corner guard being dropped out there by Eddie Lukowicz, Mike Chernoff of the Canadian team. In the other game, the United States has stolen a single point in the second end against Sweden. They now lead the Swedes 3-0. Tom Schaefer had to make a double takeout, a raise takeout. Got just one, left the U.S. stone on the eight-foot ring, and now trails 3-0. Mike Chernoff, uh, Norway is lying one. He threw up a corner guard. Norway is ignoring it now and playing the rays on their own and try to get it by their corner guard. Looks a little bit strong. It's going to have to curl two to make contact. He's going to slide right on by and with that extra weight down center, Mike Chernoff very easily gets it off. And Norway definitely had to make that shot to put a little bit of pressure on Canada. Now, Mike Chernoff will just remove that rock and hopefully roll either right or left behind one of those guards. Sure now, trying to set up the mechanics for at least two to get back into this game as he trails Norway 2-0. Well, he has the mechanics already set up with two corner guards up. Here's Dale Johnson, the second. Dale has to hang around with this hit. He cannot afford to roll out. Did he roll right or left? I think he's going to hit right on the nose. And it's... I think it's on the rings, Don, although it's not easy to determine from this angle. Nonetheless, it's going to be a takeout attempt coming up by Norway. Of course, Norway would like to hit and stick right there. That's what they've done. Well, now Chernoff has a decision to make. Either he's going to go around or he's going to try to hit that one and roll into the rings. But that rock is very, very close to the ring, so I'd be very surprised if he tries to go around it. No, he's going to play the hit. Two nothing for Norway in the third end. Three nothing for the USA over Sweden in the third end of the other semifinal game. 
The winners meet tomorrow for the Air Canada Silver Broom. We'll have it for you live on CBC Television starting at 2 Eastern Time. So Canada has left that one on the center line and uh, a little surprised right now that the Norwegians are making a play on it. That could be a useful rock for them. Well, Don, why they're making a play on it, that rock is very, very close to the center line. Not only that, Canada has another one on the left-hand side of it. So if they left it there and tried to draw around and were maybe heavy or light on the draw, Canada would simply come down and bump that one up into the house and have two guards. So that's the reason he's removing it. Do you like to stick there? That center line shows you how the rock is curling. He's going to have it a little bit inside. He'll roll away, and now we have two guards to the left and one on the right. Nothing in the ring. And there's no question that uh, Lukovic is going to ask Chernoff to go around those corner guards. They potentially, Don, have a possibility of scoring two points with those two corner guards up. Of course, once again, the danger is going behind the T-line. He'd like to just maybe get it half in the 12 foot behind those guards. Canada has not won a World Curling Championship 1972 in Garmisch Partenkirchen, Germany. Expectations running high here, playing at home in Winnipeg. At this team, skipped by Chernoff, last rock thrown by Lukowicz could come through. They have indicated they may be the superior team of all 10 throughout the week, but it's a brand new season when these playoffs are underway today. That's right, the week is behind them. It's uh, do or die right now, and I know that they're really keyed up for this game. Chernoff looks like he could be a little strong here. The rock is down that center line, has some curling to do. I think he may be through the rings. Storm's gonna get on it. Is he gonna hang in the back 12 foot? He may just stop in the back 12 foot. He does. That is not an ideal rock for Chernoff at this stage. They are discussing the weight, and I feel they're still battling the weight here, although it's the third end on. Well, they can't seem to get the rock in the right place. They're either three feet heavy or two feet short, so you're right, Don. They're struggling with their weight. Here's an interesting call by uh, the Norway skip. He's asking him to take this rock out. You know, if he was really to be aggressive here, he could play exactly the same rock as the Canadians, only try to drop it a little bit shorter and in around those guards. That's what I thought he might do, but you're right. He's playing the hit on it. Got to get it by that guard of the front. He does just by a good looking shot. And he will stay. Back of the 12 foot, Norway line one. That was the third Morton Surum. The Canadian third, Mike Chernoff, going back for his last rock here in N3. And they're going to completely ignore that shot uh, of the Norway team and just draw around again. They feel that Chernoff, well, he was maybe about nine feet heavy. He's going to take a little bit off and maybe get it in a little bit tighter and on the T line. That's why that was a questionable call by uh, Christian to play the takeout on that rock at the back. Let's see if Mike could adjust his draw weight. He might have rolled that one a little bit inside. They're going to have to go on this one to get it by that guard. See that rock starting to take off on that center line, Don? They're really yep. going to have to brush. It looks like he's going to be by. He may be strong, though. That's what held the lineup. Let's see how it comes out of the other one now. He's going to have a good shot, Don. He'd be a little inside of a slight roll, and there he is, line one. And up comes the Canadian flag once again as they wave with every successful shot for this team from Madison Hat, Alberta. Well, that's not quite what they wanted, Don, because now that rock, by getting the roll, forces uh, Christian Sorum to come around and just play the cold, cold draw. Skip rocks remaining. Two nothing for Norway. There you see the situation. He's taking a lot of ice. He's outside that center line. Well, if his weight is uh, on the plus side, he could very well slide by. It's a tricky shot for him. He's just throwing the pretty release. good weight at it. You can see just how keen that ice is. He just let it roll out of his hand. This has got a long way to curl, Don. Now it's, it's starting, starting to come. come. Oh, he's got a great looking shot. Just depending on his weight. He should bring it and roll that rock into the open. He has left the Canadian stall there, but he's sitting about uh, eight inches ahead of it to shot rock. 
be a delicate chip out for Eddie Lukowicz now as he takes about the same ice that Zulam did a moment ago. Well, I don't think there's any way that uh, Lukowicz can take that rock out without killing the one at the back. So he will be playing just the straight draw. He's taking exactly the same ice that Christian has in this, this particular case. It's just a little bit outside the center line. So he's just playing cold, cold draw. If he does come down and happen to catch it on the inside and ease it over a foot or so, all the better. He has two left. Norway has one. They start brushing it right away. Starts to cut right about here. Oh, I think he's well by. He's got a good looking shot done. They just want to nestle up to it. They don't want to move it at all. He'll be a little bit on the outside of it. He'll touch it. Stay right there. Well, he's left an easier shot somewhat for Christian Sorum now. It is in the open near the center line, and Norway's second shot is almost totally frozen to Canada's third. Well, Don, it appeared they jumped on that rock right away to start brushing it because it looked like maybe Eddie was going to be a little bit short. They held it up, but unfortunately, Eddie had lots of weight, and the rock rolled into the open. He would have just liked to have frozen down to it. Of course, Christian here would like to hit this rock and maybe roll a little bit to the right-hand side and force Lukowicz to make just a cold, cold draw rather than give him a, a two or three rocks at the back of the house to draw to. He's, he's going to hit it, but he may roll out. No, he's got a fine shot. There he goes, rolling it over to the right, so he's lying two, and the best that Canada can do is pick up one here. So the Norwegians have very successfully played through this third end. And as predicted, they are providing extremely tough opposition for this Canadian team here in the Sudden Death semifinal. They're playing very, very well and uh, reading the ice very well, so Canada's going to have to come up with a big, big game to uh, to beat them. Remember the World Junior Championship we saw a couple of weeks ago in Grindelwald, Switzerland, how Paul Geisel, who eventually went on to win the title, had a real scare against the Norwegian team, skipped by Shirlo in the semifinal, won at 4-3 when the young Norwegian missed the only shot he missed all day, his last rock of the 10th and when he rolled out. That's right, this goes to prove one thing, you can only afford to miss one and cost them a championship. It's the wrong one. Oh, look which is playing the double here. He gets the roll over and sits on top and oh. pays for one. Luke, which was a little bit fortunate there, Don, because if he hits that rock a little fitter, he spins out and leaves the Norwegians one. Well, he gets a point. Trails Norway by two to one after three and. Norwegians, of course, getting last rock coming up on the fourth. Here's the American Swedish game now. It is three nothing. They each have a couple of. They each have a rock left after this one, and there's a guard put on the Swedish rock. They're lying shot, and I think that is also second shot. They're lying one two. The United States has third shot, possibly fourth over on the left. As Bobby Nichols, the skip, looks at it now. Well, Bobby Nichols has taken a close look at these rocks to see who is shot, because if Sweden is shot, they're lying three. And it's not between two rocks, it's between two uh, uh, two American rocks, Don, and one Swedish rock. So it's questionable who is shot on that left-hand side. Well, that's uh, a view of it, the best we can show you right now. And uh, what do you think, Don? It looks to me like the uh, one of the one or the two yellow ones are ahead of that uh, Swedish rock that's in the eight foot there. Nichols oh. now talking with uh, third Bill Strum about uh, trying to kill both of these, maybe. But where does he send the first rock? That's his problem. We would like to welcome viewers in uh, Minnesota and Wisconsin, who I understand are picking up our CBC telecast today on cable television. Uh, Bobby Nichols, rink, of course, from Superior, Wisconsin, went through the United States Championships undefeated. And here, finished at 7-2, and two, battling what? to get past Sweden to the final. What they're looking at, Don, is the possibility of coming down and making contact with that rock, driving it over here and taking this one, and then a shooter spinning over here in this direction, and maybe making a triple kill or rolling over into that area. 
I think what he's concerned about, Don, is that the top rock rolls over against one of his own. He either takes it out or freezes right there. That could be a problem. Well, the difficulty is, is if he hits that front one on the top there, right on the nose, there could be a chance that uh, Sweden would have a free draw for two because he wouldn't uh, make the double. So we're down to these final two rocks. In end at number three. And there's another portion of this large and exuberant crowd here in the Winnipeg Arena. Bobby Nichols goes back for his last shot. Last rock belongs to Sweden as they trail 3 nothing. It's a big shot for Bobby. If the Swedes can uh, get a couple of this end, they're back in the game. And uh, if Nichols can make what he's after here, he could wipe them right out conceivably. Well, if he's lying third shot over there and he makes the double, Don, it's going to be very, very difficult for Sweden to get more than one. Through two ends, Bobby Nichols has curled 100% in this game. That's unbelievable. Well, that rock is starting to move. I think he's got a great-looking shot here. If he hits it thick, no, he's a too thick. And you see, that's the danger where he sent the top rock. If it rolls to the four-foot ring, it leaves him now, I think, second shot quite certainly as Tom Schaefer looks at it. Nichols slides down the ice. But Sweden has got one for sure, and I think will be quite content to draw for two and ignore the other yellow rocks that are on the left. Well, when you get down this far in the World Championship, uh, they may call for a measure on all four of those rocks now. Now there's one more at it, so. Schaefer's big job here, of course, is to concentrate on the draw and make sure that he gets two points and get ba gets back in this game. We'll be rejoining our coverage of the Canada-Norway game shortly. Right now, Canada's lying one. They trail 2-1 on the fourth end. This is the final rock of in three, Sweden and the United States. And Tom Schaefer, Don, has not played many draws. And right away, the Oatman third. Runs out Oatman to help him. Way out there. Now they back off. It's sliding pretty well as it reaches the area of center They may have right. overswept this one. He hasn't got much room to play with back there. Bobby Nichols no, comes up. Sweep it, but it hangs in. He gets a pair for sure. And let's see if they examine the other rock. Yes, they're going to call for the umpire, Ray Turnbull, to come out and, oh. and measure. Well, one of the Swedish players just kicked off one of those rocks. And now, oh, there's the controversy, Don. What's happened is one of the Swedish players kicked off the rock. And the United States was going to say, well, that rock uh, was still in play. That might have been the third shot rock. That's right. It was their rock that the Swedish player kicked off. Sweden with two, looking for more on a measurement here. Just skimmed the surface of the red Swedish stone and the same on that one so they push it away the United States did have third shot so that rock didn't matter as Bill Strum has a word now with the Swedish player about that situation and Tommy Schaefer looks quite calm about the whole situation he's got a pair he's back in this game trading 3-2 we'll rejoin our coverage for Winnipeg right after this <laughs> Everbrood has all kinds of power to get you where you're going in a hurry. Whether you're in a hurry to catch your supper, or even in a hurry to catch something else, Everbrood gives you 17 ways to go from 2 to 235 horses. Because some things in life are worth hurrying for, Everbrood gives you all kinds of power. Chevrolet for 78 announces a lot more Chevette for a lot less money. New Chevette standard equipment includes a radio, reclining bucket seats, white wall tires, console, sports steering wheel, 1.6 liter engine, 18 new standard features and all, and you still get a wide hatch, carpeting, front disc brakes, rack and pinion steering, and more. The 78 Chevy Chevette, a lot more Chevette for a lot less money. Fortunately, I suppose, no controversy developed because the Americans did win that measurement anyway. However, the Americans did not lodge any complaint about that rock being removed. So as a result, umpire Ray Turnbull did not have to intervene. But as things develop, 
Only two for the Swedes in that third end anyway. Standing with me, a very pretty lady, a lady who has been doing a big job this week, looking after the press contingent here, a lar rather large group as well, distributing paper, information, etc. You may recognize her as the 1978 Canadian Ladies Curling Champion, Kathy Pizarco of Winnipeg. Kathy, I understand you had an exhibition match this morning against last year's world champion Ragnar Camp. Yes, we did. We played Ragnar this morning around 10 o'clock in the morning on sheet three, uh, right out here. I imagine now you're looking forward to playing Ragnar in the CBC Curling Classic when there's some money on the line. Yeah, I hope we can <laughs> play the same way. Kathy, by the way, will be one of the competing rinks in the CBC Curling Classic. That will be seen, of course, next winter and through next curling season on the CBC Television Network. Kathy is the 1978 Lassie champion. Congratulations on that title. Next year, you'd like to repeat, because next year, for the first time, a ladies' world championship. Yes, I hope we can. Kathy, is that rink going to be able to stay together for another year? I understand uh, somebody's going to be moving away. Yes, I will be moving away. So I hope my team stays together, and I hope that I can get a good competitive team, and maybe we'll meet my own team. <laughs> okay, Kathy, we'll look forward to seeing you at the CBC Curling Classic. Kathy Pizarco, the 1978 Canadian Ladies Champion for activity in the semifinals of the 1978 World Championship. Back upstairs to Chevy and Doogie. All right, Don, and we might add that she indeed did defeat Ragnar Camp in that match this morning, and, uh, well, the money's in the line in Moncton. We'll see how that comes out in a few weeks' time. You'll be seeing it, of course, next season here in CBC. This is the fourth end of Canada-Norway. Norwegian stone sticking right near the center line out in front. There's nothing on the rings. And we're down to Skip Rock. 2-1 for Norway. They have last rock here in the fourth. 3-2 USA over Sweden in the other semifinal as the Swedes got a pair on the third end. That, where that rock is sitting uh, is an ideal spot for Canada. The danger here for them is that rock is very, very close to the center line and belongs to Norway. So Luke, which in this particular case is taking enough height to make sure that he gets around it. He can't afford to touch that rock or he may move it into the ring. Eddie Lukowicz playing the intern draw. <laughs> Just a question to wait on this shot. Well, he's got good line. He's just depending on his weight now, Don. Now it starts to curl. He may have a perfect shot. They're going to try to get it into the forefoot. Well, it's not totally in behind. The rock stopped up in the eighth foot. That's how much a Norwegian skip Christian Sorum can see. Lukowicz would have liked to have maybe about another two feet of weight on that ice to maybe just tuck it in behind that guard a bit. It's fairly well open for uh, Sorum, but he has to be very careful here because if he throws any kind of weight, that rock will run very, very straight. You'll see the, where he's holding the brush. He's got about uh, three inches of, uh, of ice, so he's not going to throw too much weight. He jumped on it right away. Oh, is he going to get by? Oh, yes. He's just by with an excellent shot. The Norwegians are playing very, very tough curling today. Well, I'll tell you something, they're putting a lot of pressure on the Canadian team. Later on today, of course, and tomorrow, we'll have the action from the Dinosaur Winner's Circle Golf Championship out of California. And right now, a Canadian, Sandra Post from Oakville, is the leader by one shot heading into round three. You'll see it following our coverage of the Silver Broom this afternoon. Of course, the final round tomorrow after our final round of the Silver Broom. Eddie Lukowicz now has got to duplicate the shot just made by Christian Sorum. Well, Christian got just a fraction of a roll, maybe an inch or two, Don, and uh, while it's fairly open, it's going to be very difficult for uh, Ed Lukowicz to hit and stick right there. And he certainly just doesn't want to tick that front one, or he could put it in, depending on his weight. He's well out there. He's well out He's got, he's got it. He'll roll slightly to the left of stage till I walk. Boy, the amazing thing with that shot, Don, he threw big, big weight at that rock and hit it pretty well right on the nose. It snaked a little bit down the ice. 
little wiggly that path. And now Sorum will go after it, I would expect, trying to take it out and roll away. Norway leading two to one. They can get no more than one here with Last Rock in his fourth end. I don't think Krishna will throw near the weight that Lukowicz did. He's got a piece of that rock, Don. He may have more than he wants. No. He's successful in blanking it. The second blank end of the game for Norway had paid off the first time. They came back with two in the second end after blanking the first. So it remains two to one. Once again, down to Don. Well, one of the interested observers here is Wally Ursula, who played with Hector Vey when they won the forerunner to the Air Canada Silver Broom, the Scotch Cup, way back when. 61. That's Are you really as old as Don Duguid? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Not that old. Wally, you've instructed in Europe. You made a very interesting observation while we were watching this game about the strategy employed by some of the European rinks. Well, the thing is that, uh, if you'll notice, people are watching on television, that the European rinks always look for a, a way of raising their stone into the house. In other words, a promotion rather than a come around because... And bearing back to the business, I mean, selling curling stones, but it's it's that they don't see the rocks drawing around guards. They look for the promotion all the time, and this is where you can beat them. And if the rock starts to pull, the ice starts to swing a little bit, they won't make those fine shots, straight raises. They've made some pretty good takeouts in this game, though. Boy, this this Norwegian team's an excellent team, and Ray Termo's done a great job with them because they all throw good. They're, out of the four teams competing now, they are, I would say, the second best next to the Canadians, and then would be the Swedes or the uh, United States because of their throwing ability. Do they place more emphasis on conditioning than we do, perhaps? I think so. I think they take the game a little ser more serious as far as condition goes and a little more training. And uh, I think this is where the Canadians have to upgrade their curling a little bit. Okay, Wally, thanks very much for chatting with us. Wally Ursulik, who was with Hector Vey's championship team in 1961. We'll return to the 78 championship right after we pause for these messages. The management and staff of McCulley Real Estate congratulate the 1978 Dominion Champions. For a champion team in real estate, call Alan Rogers, Sid Stuber, Mike Mather, or Al Baird. Take a look at this three-bedroom bungalow located in Red Cliff, or this two-bedroom bungalow also located in Red Cliff. Remember, McCulley Real Estate is where your complete real estate needs are met by professionals. <laughs> Insurance by the best covers you the most, and the practical way to insure is to see Thompson Fisher Insurance. Thompson Fisher provides all types of insurance coverage for your car, home, and business. Call on David, Mel, or Janice for your insurance requirements. At Thompson Fisher, people make the difference. Their staff is fully qualified in every aspect of the insurance field. Protect what you have today for the future by insuring with Thompson Fisher Insurance, 459 2nd Street, the people who care. Minute Muffler is celebrating this fantastic spring weather with the spring sale. Now you can buy a muffler from 06 and small V8 Ford Mercury, Chef, Dodge, Plymouth, and Chrysler cars with single exhaust. Just $11.95 with free installation. Most 1965 to 75 models is listed only $14.95 with free installation. Plus, all mufflers, including performance mufflers not included in the sale, 20% off. At Minute Muffler's spring sale, open daily to 8 p.m. Sale ends April 15th. For all your car or truck tire needs, stop in to OK Tire at 770 17th Street Southwest, your BF Goodrich tire dealer in Medicine Hat. See Gord, Gary, or Lucky for wheel alignment and brake service. Superior Muffler, a division of OK Tire, is now open and carry a lifetime guarantee in all parts and labor. Master Charge and Charge X are available at your BF Goodrich dealer in Medicine Hat, OK Tire. The Air Canada Silver Broom Banner has made its 11th journey to Winnipeg in 1978. This is the 11th Silver Broom, having started back at Point Clair, Quebec in 1968. Canada trailing Norway 2-1. to one. The United States leading Sweden 3-2. to two. And as teams, Canada, through four ends, curled 73%. The Norwegians... 66 percent. There's the takeout shot stopping at the eight foot circle. So Norway is lying one. The key, Don, has been the difference in the skips. Sorum, 89 percent, skipping Norway. And Lukowicz, last shooter for Canada, has curled at 56 percent. 
Well, also, Don, you can reflect back on the third man. Uh, Mike Chernoff uh, is curling 66%, while Morton Sorum is only curling 41. So one kind of offsets the other, and that's the reason the clo game is as close as it is. The top shooter is this man right here, Dale Johnson. He's curling at 91% now as they play the fifth end. A slight roll to the right, Canada down, a takeout by Johnson lying one. And they're playing it very simple and wide open, Don. Uh, they're now into the fifth end, and I would suspect that uh, Chernoff will maybe start uh, garbaging it up a bit, maybe getting a couple of front stones on and get uh, their Norwegian team to play the fine, fine shots. Here is Ramsfell, the second for Norway, playing the hit. You know, the Norwegians have very fluid, well-balanced deliveries, and... Uh, they play the takeout game very, very well. Although this looks like a very close to a miss, and sure enough, there it is. I put the kiss of death on them there, Don. Well, they used to exclusively, as you know, play the takeout game. Uh, Knut Bianis was the skip uh, who first gained prominence for Norway, a great takeout artist, but he couldn't draw to save his life. Now they've got a more balanced approach to it. Well, that's right. They're uh, more diversified now. They can play both the draw game and the takeout game. But you're right, up until maybe uh, three, four years ago, they played nothing but takeouts. Their uh, theory on that was that if they weren't in the rings, you can't count. So that was their philosophy. Well, this team, as we have stated, is back for its third consecutive Silver Broom appearance. Finally made the playoffs for the first time in history in Norway. Mike Chertoff now with Canada after that miss by Ramsfell, lying one. Trailing two to one. And Canada's going to cover up that rock that's in the eight foot. He looks a little warm. It should start digging in. The problem here for them is they're not sweeping it. It's going to dig in and maybe curl a little bit too much. But you're right. He's going to be a little too close to the rings for comfort. Well, now they decide to bring it right on in. And it comes up to freeze against his own shot. But a double takeout possibility is very much alive for the Christian Sorum ring as Chernoff team too deep. Well, that's right, Don. And not only that, it changes the whole complexion of a game. If Chernoff had a stop short, then the Norwegian Norway team had a decision to make whether they would run the front one off or go after the shard rod. And that is the item of most concern right now is that we are almost at the halfway mark of the schedule 10 end game. And the Canadian back end in particular, Lukowicz and Chernoff are still trying to find the exact weight. You know, this is an exacting game, Don, and uh, if you get a chance to get a point, you have to put a guard on, boy. You have to make sure that you get it there. Here's Morton Sorum attempting to take off both Canadian stones. There they go. Nice roll across to the 12 foot on the right. To update you on the other game, the USA now has picked up a single point and increased their lead to 4-2 over Sweden after four ends. And there is a man who's trying to urge Sweden on. And these people, of course, are with Eddie Lukowicz and Mike Chernoff and company, as are many viewers across our CBC network today. But it has been five years since Canada has won the World Championship, as we've stated. And today, playing at home, I think they may be feeling a lot of pressure right now. This big crowd could do one of two things, Don. It can encourage you, which they're trying to do. It could put a lot of pressure on a Canadian team, knowing that they are expected to win at home. Well, it's tough playing in front of your hometown people. Uh but if they get back in this game and maybe uh, make a couple of good shots, they'll get uh, fired up. The momentum will get going. Well, Chernoff made the hit that time, rolled away, so we have nothing in play now as Morten Surum, the third for Norway, is about to play his last stone. Two to one, the Norwegians lead. We are in the fifth end. You know, the interesting thing about the Norwegian team is they um, don't take very long to play. The individual throwing the rock is already in the hack and ready to shoot. There's no uh, strategy sessions or long discussions on what to do. They're all set to play. Well, last night's win over Scotland to make the playoffs was over a little over two hours, Don. And this one is coming up short of the ring. Aha. There is the Canadian Beaver very much in evidence here today. Eddie Lukowicz going back, his first rock coming up. Well, I'm 
I'm uh, wondering about the scoring in the Sweden-USA game. They've got Bobby Nichols still curling 100%. He went for a double takeout and only got one, but they've still got him down as 100% down. So they're being a little generous, I think. Yeah, they're being a little generous is right. He should have maybe got uh, two points for that rather than four. Lukowicz at 56% so far today. And this is a little bit of a gamble for Canada here. They have to get this rock right in around that corner guard. Boy, they can't afford to stay in the open and allow the opportunity for the Norwegian team to hit and roll behind. And that rock is not curling. It's going to be in the open. And just up into the 12, near the 8. But I saw Luca was just shake his head there, and uh, I think he feels that it's just about impossible to bury a rock in that particular corner. Norway has last rock. You recall they blanked the fourth end. Christian Sorrell on the skip, coming up big for the game he has to win today at 89% so far, out curling Lukowicz at 56. Well, if Christian keeps that up, it's going to be very, very difficult to beat him. And this is a big, big shot, because if he can hit about three-quarters of the rock, roll behind that corner guard, there is a chance that he could get two, unless Lukowicz either outdrew it or made the double kill on that one in the front. He has lots of weight. I don't think he's going to bury. He's probably going to hit it right on the nose. And come across. Into the eighth foot. Over on the other side. Well, the only way I think you can bury is to get a roll. He got one the other way. Well, that's not a bad shot for uh, the Norwegian skip. This way, at least, if Lukowicz hits it on the nose, he's going to have a chance to blank it. So if he couldn't get the perfect roll, he will take that shot. In a brand new spot and a new challenge for Lukowicz. As his last rock ready to go now with the Norwegians still having one remaining. See Chernoff holding that broom down. He's got it right in the center of the rock. So that means the ice runs very, very straight. And I don't think Lukowicz will be short on this one. It can curl here. We saw a Norwegian stone curl inside and miss. But Lukowicz is throwing pretty good weight to hold the line on this one. They haven't laid a brush to it yet. In fact, he's going to be right there. That's called saving your sweepers. So Eddie upped his percentage of successful shots with that hit and stick. And I would fully expect the Norwegians to once again blank this end if they can. Some fans from Norway here cheering their team on this afternoon. But they are vastly outnumbered by this large throng here, almost 10,000 of them. Probably 9,000 or more Canadian supporters in the Winnipeg Arena. Again, pretty good weight, just as Lukowicz had thrown before. Well, Soren shrugs. They stick. He didn't roll out. He takes a single point he wanted to avoid. And so Norway now is into a two-point lead at the halfway mark of this game by a score of 3-1. to one. Once again, down to dog. Eddie Lukowicz, the skip of the Canadian rink, or at least the man throwing last rocks. This is a tough game. Certainly is. These guys are just making everything. I think what we've got to do is we've got to get guards out front and try and get them to the out turn. They're throwing the in turn continually and making it just every shot on the in turn now. That's got to be our strategy now. We've got to get it going. We've got to get some guards out there and get some points on that board. The ice seems very keen. The, this is the best ice has been for the whole series here. They flooded it last night, and there are no falls in it. The ice was tricky before, but now it's much better, and uh, these guys seem to like the fine ice, uh, the good ice. How does this large crowd affect you? Are you encouraged by them? Yeah, they're keeping us going, and uh, we're not giving up in this game. Uh, we need this game, and uh, right now we're thinking about winning it. You got a large crowd here in the arena cheering for you. You got a large group of Canadians, particularly back home in Medicine Hat, pulling for you to pull this one up. That's right. We need one good end. We need a three ender in this game, and I think it's coming right up. Eddie, thanks for taking that break to talk to us, and we'll return to the sixth end of this semifinal game right after we pause for this timeout. The management and staff of McCulley Real Estate congratulate the 1978 Dominion Breyer champions. For a champion team in real estate, call Ed Lukowicz, Ernie Rucks, 
Francis Eisenman or Sid Stuber. Have a look at this three-bedroom home with a city view lot and air conditioning located at 74 Craven Place Southeast. Or this home, which is 2,700 feet of luxury overlooking the Medicine Hat Golf Club. Remember McCulley Real Estate, where your complete real estate needs are met by professionals. At Thompson Fisher Insurance, solving problems is a big part of their business. Insurance problems that seem to have you going this way and that. David, Mel, and Janice have the expertise to handle those insurance problems. The staff at Thompson Fisher work as a team on your behalf, and that's the way it should be. For your convenience, their hours are 8.30 to 5, Monday through Friday. Thompson Fisher Insurance, 459 2nd Street. The people who care. Minute Muffler is celebrating this fantastic spring weather with the spring sale. Now you can buy a muffler from 06 and small V8 Ford Mercury, Chef, Dodge, Plymouth, and Chrysler cars with single exhaust. Just $11.95 with free installation. Most 1965 to 75 models is listed only $14.95 with free installation. Plus, all mufflers, including performance mufflers, not included in the sale, 20% off. At Minute Muffler's spring sale, open daily to 8 p.m. Sale ends April 15th. For all your car or truck tire needs, stop in to OK Tire at 770 17th Street Southwest, your BF Goodrich tire dealer in Medicine Hat. See Gord, Gary, or Lucky for wheel alignment and brake service. Superior Muffler, a division of OK Tire, is now open and carry a lifetime guarantee on all parts and labor. Master Charge and Charge X are available at your BF Goodrich dealer in Medicine Hat, OK Tire. Well, on Thursday, once again, it's baseball time on CBC. I'll be in Detroit with Tony Kubek. And Tom McKee, as Mark the Bird Pidrich, is expected to pitch against the Toronto Blue Jays in the Major League opener. That's Thursday, April 6th, 1.30 Eastern time. Right now, the curling season is very much with us. Four to two, the United States leading Sweden as they're playing in the fifth end, while Canada trails Norway three to one. The sixth end is underway with Norway having a rock at the eight foot of the back. Canada's got a corner guard on the left. And out it goes. So Norway has the one shot stone in the eight foot. And again, I think the Canadians will be playing guards because Eddie Lukowicz called it with Don Whitman. He says, we're due for a three ender. We're going to go get it right now. Well, the interesting thing he said was uh, the fact that the Norwegian team is playing nothing but interns and straight hits. So. He wants to get them to maybe play the fine shots, and that's why they're going to throw up the corner guard, make the shots a little bit more difficult for the Norwegians. This is lead Ronnie Schindel, the 22-year-old. Again, playing that quiet guard way out in front. They're not touching it, as you can see. Lukowicz and Johnson just watching it slide. And he's come perhaps a little too deep. But stays just out, or does he? Now he's on the rings of the 12 foot, I think. And right away, Norway will go after that. That's not a very good shot by Ronnie Schindel. They want that rock somewhere halfway between the house and the hog line so that if the Norwegians hit it on the nose, they can get a little bit of room to go around it. But now the Norwegians can hit that and roll to the center and protect that one that they have in the forefoot. This is Eagle Ramsfell. He will get a roll to the inside. It'll come across the rings and... Almost covered up his shot rock. It's open. It rolled just a few inches too far. But a fine shot by the Norwegian second. Just to uh, bring fans up to date, I may want to catch that opening baseball game on Thursday, and I'm sure many do. It'll be 1.30 across the country, except it'll be 2.30 in the Maritimes and 3 o'clock in Newfoundland. That's the Blue Jays and the Tigers on Thursday from Tiger Stadium in Detroit. Let's hope it's warm. Well, what's happened, Don? Uh, with that shot uh, by the Norwegian player, He's completely changed the complexion of this end. Canada cannot afford now to throw up corner guards because the Norwegians have two rocks in the house. So they're going to resort to the freezing game to try and get more than one point. That's a good result in the most interesting end on here in the sixth. Dale Johnson shot. Got good line. Now it starts to curl a bit. They start to get on it. It's starting to pull over. He's got pretty good weight. That's a fine shot. Excellent. Almost a perfect freeze. He tapped it back just a couple of inches. The fans love it. There's not much room between those two rocks. 
And you'll see Christian just tap the side of the Canadian rock and say, okay, we want you to hit just a half a rock here. Meanwhile, in the other game, there's more pressure on Tom Schaefer of Sweden as the Americans are lying to his last rock is coming up. The USA leads 4-2 at this stage. This, this is a big shot for Norway, Don. That rock is hanging out. He may go by and take his own out. Ramsdale's got a lot of weight on it. I think that's what he's done. Yes. So Canada gets a big break. They're left lying wide. It was all in the weight, Don. Well, that's right. He badly overthrew that rock. The rock hugged that center line all the way down, Don. It made a little move at the end, and you see he just misses the Canadian rock, but worse, he takes out the one at the back. And once again, Canada's going to resort to the freezing game. Looking for a corner freeze on that second shot rock of Norway's to the right. Well, he accomplishes two things, Don. If he corner freezes it, he protects that one that he has in the forefoot, and he can always, with his next shot, maybe raise his onto this Norwegian rock in lie three. Here's Dale Johnson again. He made a great shot with his first. Again, being called upon to freeze to the other stone. They're laying right off it now. It's got some room. He's got a lot of curling to do if he's going to get the corner freeze. He may be back to the weight he threw the first time, which would be a little too strong in this case. Digging in now a little bit. Now, he's played it pretty well. He's not frozen to it, but it's a rock the Norwegians really can't afford to ignore. Here is the uh, other semifinal now, the fifth and Tom Schaefer's last rock, facing two. Needs an inside roll for the count. He doesn't get it. The Americans are left with one in the eight-foot ring. And the United States now is into an imposing 5-2 lead at the halfway mark of that game. The fifth and now completed. Back to Norway and Canada. Orton Serum, the third for Norway, will make a play on this rock that Dale Johnson just played. You'll see, Don, there's a little bit of space between the Norwegian rock and the Canadian rock out in front. If he hits this rock right on the nose, there is a possibility he could make the double. He's got to be very, very careful here. He can't afford to hit it too thin on the outside. That rock is starting to make a move. He's got a good-looking shot if he makes it. Yes, he has. Great shot. He got the ball. That was an end saver for Norway right there. The double raise take out. Let's have another look at how that rock finished up. Well, you see, Don, the rock just curled just enough at the end. He hits about nine-tenths of that rock, drives it back. He did graze the other one. That's right, and he makes just a super, super shot. He just touched his own, but the line was such that he made the double takeout. And now, Norway lies, too, and Lukowicz and Chernoff have got a problem. They want to get at least two in this end. It'll be difficult to blanket now with the two Norwegian shots in there. Don, I'm not sure, but I thought I said, saw Lukowicz pat in front of the ice, just in front of the house, which means that they're going to play a guard, which yes, is an inter is. interesting sure concept is. here. So what he's figuring is he's going to put it out in front. If the Norwegians ignore it, he'll go around it, and that way he'll try to get his two points. Or if they go after it, they may drive it onto one of their own. This is roulette time. A gamble for Canada in the sixth end. Well, this is a big, big gamble, because if they put it out in front and the Norwegians decide to go in, Boy, they've got themselves in a little bit of trouble. It's an interesting call here. Again, this is an exacting weight shot. Called upon for Mike Chernoff. Boy, and he looks heavy. They're not brushing it at all. They want it right on that center line, halfway between the house and the hog line. It's going to be near the center line. It's going to be a little deeper than that, though. Just out in front. Well, you see the concern there, the spectator on the left. I'm sure many Canadians are feeling that right now as Norway has a two-point lead. They're in the sixth end of the Sudden Death semifinal game. There's certainly enough vocal support and visual support for this Medicine Hat team this afternoon. There's no question uh, Christians has got a problem here, and he's considering one or two options. If Rock has to concern him, he could think about maybe going in behind for one thing, Don. He's afraid of hitting it as to where it's going to wind up. Well, the danger for Christian is that if he hits this rock here, he could drive it on this one or he could hit it over on the other one. And then again, if he hits it on the nose, Canada will simply draw around it. So he's definitely got a problem. He could, Don, maybe ignore that guard altogether, but potentially it's a very dangerous shot. 
Well, he's calling his brother Morton back to discuss it. Norwegians have three rocks left, as do the Canadians. Canada has last rock in the sixth day, and they trail three to one. The USA leads Sweden five to two, also an N6. See, also the danger, Don, if they decide to go around it, I'm sure Lukowicz will just play the straight raise back, and if he does make it, then he's got this, the guard out in front and one in the forefoot, and potentially they have their two points set up. Don Duguid. Perhaps we can harken back to what Wally Ursulak said uh, a little earlier when he talked about the Norwegians preferring to play the raise and the, and the hit rather than the come around game. And that may be uh, one of the reasons they're debating just what shot to play down there. Well, that's right, Don. They're looking at playing maybe the raise on one of their red ones into the forefoot area or just come off that one at the side and roll into the forefoot area. But, you know, so far throughout this game, they've just been really proficient at playing the takeout game. He's taking out ice for the upturn. Outside his own rock on the right-hand side, as we saw it, as Morton Storm slides back, the decision made now. And he may be trying to slip by or buff his own up, depending on how it behaves. Well, the big thing about it, if he does make this shot, uh, Canada's two points down. There, there's a lot of pressure on them. They're really doing a lot of gambling to get back in this game. And if they ever gave up another point in this game, uh, Norway would definitely have control. So this is a big, big bet gamble on uh, Canada's part here. And in a way on Norway's in leaving that Canadian stone out in front. Let's see how it turns out. I tell you, he doesn't want to be short with this one. Oh, well, they should take it all the way. He's just going to nestle up near his own. Well, he's narrowed the fourth down. Freddy Lukowicz, certainly on that side, for any potential draw. Well, maybe if you win the Canadian Championship, sir, you can do this next year. So now the decision to be made between Chernoff and Lukowicz as to what to do, but the Norwegians lying three. Well, Lukowicz is looking at the possibility coming down, making a double and getting some action on his shooter and hitting that one and sitting right there. He'll accomplish two things. He'll make the double or the triple, and if he makes contact with that rock on the left-hand side, he will be in behind the guard. Because so there really isn't much room to draw, Don, is there? Well, there isn't much room to draw, Don, but if he doesn't make the draw perfect, he's in a lot of trouble. They'll just promote those other ones on the right-hand side, and then they'll be lying three or possibly four. So I think Eddie's pretty well committed to playing the hit. This is a big, big shot, because if he doesn't make it perfect, I'm sure the Norwegians will go right in around that center guard. This is the most challenging and interesting end of the six we have seen so far here in the semifinal from Winnipeg this afternoon. 3-1 for Norway is the score. They each have a pair left, three for Canada, with their last rock advantage, of course, in this end. I think what they're looking at, Don, is uh, if Lukowicz plays the double or the triple, I don't know whether he can make contact with that uh, front one thin enough to actually make the triple kill. He pretty near has to hit a half a rock, and I don't know whether he'd spill them all. Then again, there's a possibility they could raise that one right in the center, right back to the button, but boy, that's a tricky, tricky shot. I think he's made his decision. So Chernoff slides back down the ice. We'll remind you that tonight, on the national network of the CBC, it's the Boston Bruins against the Canadians in Montreal, while Southern Ontario will see Buffalo against the Maple Leafs in Toronto. Two fine games tonight on Hockey Night in Canada. You can see the ice that Lukowicz is giving for Chernoff here. It's right on the rock. And that rock will not move there, Don. It should run very, very straight. And he cannot afford to hit it on the outside. He must hit it very, but a half a rock on the inside. This is a very big shot for Canada right here. Well, he's just going to play the quiet, quiet tap. He wants to hit a, just a corner of a rock, get a little bit of action on his shooter, and slide to the left. Look at that rock starting to take off. He may... Yeah, oh, he's he's going to get push. on his guard. He'll skitter off oh. it and go in that way. He got a big break there, Don. Oh, did he ever. Did he ever. Yeah. 
Don, he was actually playing off the two Red Rocks on the right-hand side, but the Rock really took off on him because of quiet weight. But look at the action he gets here. It looks like it's going to get by his own guard, but he just rubs it, comes over, hits the Norwegian Rock on the top of the 12, but rolls directly in behind the guard. That would be the only way you'd ever get in that deep. <laughs> and he is. He's well up. Edging the four-foot circle under complete cover now. And the Norwegians are looking to their shot in the 12-foot on the left in terms of bumping it up and taking out the Canadian Rock in a raised takeout attempt by the skip Christian Sorum. He has to hit uh, just the Rock a little bit on the outside, Don. And he's taking that Rock rather than play the uh, raised takeout on the Canadian stone in front of the rings for fear something might happen. He'd hit it at a bad angle. Boy, they're going to have to go on this one. He might have laid it inside. I think he did. Oh, he's on the outside of the rock. I think he's Falling got a great looking shot. Now. Look out. There it is. That rock did initially start inside. It backed off for him, and he hit it just about perfectly. He's left line three. Well, this is just a fantastic shot, Don. It looked like the rock was going to maybe make a move to the inside, and he was going to hit it too full on the nose. But you'll see, he just hits it about a little bit on the outside, makes good contact, and now he's lying three. Again, playing pretty considerable weight was the difference there, and that rock flaring out and catching the stone on the outside. So Norway lying three, Lukovic going back now, and it looks as though they're about to play a similar shot. You know, the interesting thing, um, the Canadians threw up that center guard, and it really hasn't come into play other than the shot that Chernoff rubbed off and uh, made shot out of it. So they really haven't had a chance to utilize that center guard at all throughout this end. And it looks to me by the ice that Chernoff is giving Lukowicz that he's going to try to play the hit and roll to the inside. Yes, he's playing his takeout way. He's playing the double. Well, that rock has got some curling to do if he's going to make the double. I don't think so. He's just going to hit and maybe roll behind that. No. Rolls over, he gets shot, but he's available. This is going to give him a pretty big problem if uh, the Norwegian Skip Sorum takes this one out because he can't blank the end. He's forced to take one, and that's the last thing he wanted to do. So at this stage, the gambling of Canada has not paid off at end number six. Well, as I said, Don, they have not had a chance in this end to utilize that center guard. It may work against them in this particular shot because if Christian can hit this rock on the outside, that's right, belonging to Canada and roll in behind that center guard, then that little tactic didn't work for Canada. Can't afford to hit it too much on the outside, though. It may survive off their own stone on the right. His main concern, though, is just getting rid of it, saying, OK, I'm lying free. Eddie, it's your shot. Boy, they jumped on this one right away. It's, now they're off it. He's very close. To, he's going to get the roll, too, I think. Let's see where he sends the Canadian rock. It goes out cleanly, and there it is. The roll comes way across to the left. He rolled a bit too far. And it is just off. So he's lying, too. There's no double there for Eddie Lukowicz. He's going to have to attempt to take one. The one out in front uh, is too far out to consider splitting on, I believe, Don. Well, Lukowicz has got a real problem here because if he hits this rock right on the nose, he won't be shot. So they're looking at maybe possibly playing the split on the one in the front, but I think it's too far out in front of the rings, Don. I think you got a little bit too much ink in your pencil there, Don. Well, that's right. You see, Don, if he hits it right there, there's no way that he can get shot on that rock on the right-hand side. So I think he's just going to play the cold draw. <laughs> I ran out of ink on my uh, I think pen you there, did. Don. You too much white paint. <laughs> Maybe pour some Kirsch in there it would work. So Lukowicz for his final rock of the sixth end, down three to one. It's not gone his way. Well, the strategy for the Norwegians is certainly working, Don. We're playing the sixth end here, and they're forcing Canada to take the points. Well, they haven't missed. They haven't given him a chance. And I tell you, this is a very, very critical draw here for Ed Lukowicz. Well, he looks, he looks pretty good. Right, but he's down center. He looks pretty good. They're going to have to get on it, though, just to make sure it gets into the rings. That rock is hanging. Look at that rock hang on that center line. It's not moving at all. They've got to get it by their own, so it has enough momentum to get up. It just touches it. Uh-oh. Oh, did he make it? I think he has. Yes, yes he did. Just there. 
Ronnie Schindel just did a great job, Don, of staying with that rock and getting it into the 12-foot. A nervous moment there for 9,000 spectators here in Winnipeg and four members of Canada's team, but he's just got it there. A single makes it 3-2 Norway after six. The Canadians hang in there, although they missed the big end they were looking for. Here's Bobby Nichols of the United States, the Sweden lying one. He leads 5-2. He's playing his first rock, Swedes of last rock here in the sixth end. There's two rocks sitting together, one belonging to Sweden, which is shot. Bobby Nichols hasn't thrown much weight, but he looks like he has good line, Don, whether he's going to kill Ooh. his own. He got his own as well. Rolls over and is shot at the eight foot near the four. Nichols, of course, playing to keep those wide open to deny the Swedes a chance for more than one. He's got a three-point lead and wants to keep it that way. Nichols certainly has been in command, uh, as Norway has over Canada. Well, you're right. They've been in complete control of this game, and Tommy Schaefer standing behind the house there taking a look at it. I think he's deciding whether he wants to maybe freeze to that one, but that's a pretty dangerous shot. If he freezes to it and kind of puts on, or the United States puts on the guard, then they may steal another point. Well, that's the big disadvantage, of course, of being behind by two or three points. You're almost forced at a certain stage to gamble. The question is, when do you do it, and in which situation do you do it? Well, Don, the ice is running very, very straight and very fast. And if you get down three points on ice such as this, it's very, very difficult to come back. Three rocks remaining in this sixth end between Sweden and the United States. And Tommy Schaefer is just going to play the hit. Broom right in the center of the rock, so the ice runs very straight down that particular area. Oldman holds the broom. You say right on it. This crowd here immensely enjoying both these games. We hope you are as they're whooping it up at the Winnipeg Arena. Is Tommy Schaefer with pretty good line on this rock. He wants to save a shooter. He's done that. Rolls away to change the shot slightly to the right of center for U.S. skip Bobby Nichols. One rock for each man left now in the sixth end. Reminder, we'll be with you live tomorrow afternoon with the winners of these semifinals today. They battle for the 11th Air Canada Silver Broom here in Winnipeg. It'll all start one Winnipeg time, two Eastern time. Interesting concept here. You'll see Strum holding the broom upside down with the handle uh, used as the guideline for uh, throwing it. And uh, I asked Bobby Nichols about that, and he feels that he can see the broom better, and it's a smaller target, so you've got to be more exacting when you're aiming at the broom. Again, good line, a fine shot. He rolls back right on the center line. He's lying one. And Tom Schaefer now, three points down, really can't afford to take a point here. Well, after six ends in terms of team totals, Canada has outcurled Norway 79% to 71, but the scoreboard doesn't reflect that. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the second. Ninety-two hundred and thirty-one people they've announced attending this semifinal draw this afternoon. And that is limited only by the fact that they simply cannot accommodate any more people here. For the week so far, 92,021 people have watched the Silver Broom. They'll go over 100,000 with the final tomorrow. He takes the point. Tom Schaefer, I'm sure, did not want to do that. He still trails by two, trailing at five to three, and turns over last rock in the seventh end coming up to the United States. Well, that's the situation right now. We'll rejoin our coverage for Winnipeg right after this. Oldsmobile has a great new surprise package for you. A package that comes with super stock wheels, sport mirrors, and its own distinctive paint treatment. 
It's a new two-tone old special edition cutlass, and it's available in white with your choice of four exciting metallic accent colors. See and drive the old special edition cutlass at your Oldsmobile dealers and discover the great cutlass feeling. Can we build one for you? My great-grandfather kept a drink for medicinal purposes. My grandparents drank at weddings and parties. My father drank regularly, and I drank more than my father. By thinking and talking about it now, we can help prevent our children from drinking more than we do. If you drink, know when to say when. Dialogue on drinking encourages us to talk openly about drinking problems. With Don Dugan and Don Whitman, this is Don Chevrier in Winnipeg, and what a situation we have here in the seventh end with Norway ahead three to two. Four rocks out in front, well scattered. Dale Johnson just placed that Yellowstone to the left of center. He just got it across the hog line a moment ago. As the Canadians are going all out to steal, they got just one point in the sixth end. They could not blank it. They trail 3-2. Boy, this is a big, big gamble by the Norwegians. They have to get this rock in here. It's strong. It is that. He's, he's going to get by. Yes, he's by the guards, all right, but he's through the house, I think. He's all the way back to the hack. And they had to get that one in, Don. Uh, you see the guards on the right-hand side there. If he could have got it around in front of the tee line, maybe just baiting the eight-foot, there was a good chance that Norway uh, maybe had a possible two-point set up. But now the advantage has to swing back to Canada's favor. The name of this game is right now. Get in first. Well, in this particular case, that's right, because there's four rocks out in front, and there's no way the Norwegians could take them all off. So they decide to go in, which is a good call. But you have to make the shot. Now, uh, there's the ice based on that last draw shot by Norway. Compensation made by Lukowicz and Chernoff for the fact the Norwegian rock was a bit heavy. Chernoff at 71% now with a key draw here in the seventh end. This crowd here moans and groans with every foot on the path of this rock. Boy, that rock is not turning at all. It should make a move a little bit at the end here. Is he going to get by? I don't think nope. so, Don. He just plugged it up all the more to the right of center and kicked that one over on the left to create actually a larger opening. Well, that's right. The rock that he hit uh, just over the center line, or over the hot line, rather, was, could have possibly helped him, but now he's taking it off, and the rocks are on uh, off the center line, so Norway's going to go in again. Canada's been looking for a big shot brought this afternoon and they haven't had it yet they got a break on Chernoff's back in the previous end when it wrecked at a guard came over onto a stone with 12 foot of Norway's and tucked in behind but the Norwegian skipped Sorum made a raise takeout in his own and got rid of it boy this one looks strong too they're not laying a brush to it ice maybe maybe changing a little bit Don let's get he's getting away from center though he may have a chance with this one he's just oh he, here's a break if it'll hang around for him he gets it over in the direction of that cover. Lukovic is scrubbing it hard to get it off the back, but he can't. Well, that was a bit of a break for Norway because that rock would have been through the house. I guess that just gets them even for the break Canada got in the other end. Large crowd here enjoying it this afternoon. We hope you are. The action of both these semifinal games. Canadian fans just cheering as hard as they possibly can for the Eddie Lukovic team. Of course, this is another big, big shot, as they all are for Canada. Mike Chernoff must get this rock into the eight-foot area and completely buried. He cannot afford to stay in the open because that'll allow Norway the opportunity maybe to hit it and roll if he doesn't bury. Just down that center line. They wait for it to react. Weight looks pretty good. He has lots of room to get by the guards. It should start making a move now. You'll see it coming off that center line. Oh, he's got a great-looking shot, and it just bends a bit more. Maybe a shade too deep. Yeah, it's back of the T-line, but he's certainly there under partial cover for shot. He did come a little bit too far, though. Well, he came a little bit too far, Don, but that rock, once it got by the guards, did very little curling, and Norway can still see it. You can see it lined up there. You can see about a half a rock. And if he can hit what he sees, he'll roll into the open on the other side, and that changes the complete complexion of this end. Because of the fact he's got that second shot at the back, the one Lukowicz 
here as he tried to brush off before. Well, he's thrown lots of weight to this one. That rock is a lot of curling to do if he's going to make contact. He's starting to make a move now. Oh, it's going to be touch and go whether he makes contact with that Canadian stone. And how much will he get? He's got enough. Rolling over, and now Norway is lying, too, and the Canadians have got a real problem. Well, they, you're right, Don. They have a real problem now. They're going to have to gamble with the last two rocks and try to get one in around that corner. But the danger here is that it will not curl in behind those guards. As you say, on ice such as this, when you get behind, it's very, very difficult to scramble and gamble and pick up some points. Well, I don't think Canada is going to gamble and try to steal a point here. Mike Chernoff has elected to play the double on those two rocks. It's there. Not an easy double by any means. You see, it just obscured a little bit by Chernoff, but there's a rock full in the 12 foot. And then if Lukowicz hits a half a rock, there is a good chance that he'll make the double. And if he gets any kind of luck at all, he, the action off his shooter may come off that one at the back and get in behind those guards. This is the seventh end. Norway leads Canada 3-2. But the big shot, Don, if he hits and rolls up, boy, it'll allow Norway the opportunity to go around those guards. Oh, they, they're right off it. He's throwing big, big weight on it. This has got to start curling for him. He can't hit it too thin. He's got to hit it. Here he is. Oh, he's getting behind it. He got one of them. And just as you saw, got in behind the other shot. So Norway has two left, Canada has one, and Norwegians playing for a two count here, which would give them a three-point lead. And I believe the Norwegians are playing the intern draw around that corner guard way up there on the left-hand side, Don, and that's a great, great call. He doesn't want to go in around the corner guards on the right-hand side because if he goes a little too deep, Canada will just play the free shot and get out of the center. Well, there he is, the skip Christian Surum, and a big game for him, withstanding pressure at 86%. He's outcurled Eddie Lukowicz. Oh, he's heavy. Look at him. They've dropped right off it. Oh, this rock has got a lot of digging in to do if it's going to stop. Oh, I'm afraid he's through the house. Canada may get off the hook here. They are indeed off the hook as it goes off the back. That was the chance for Norway to... Pack away two. Now with a rock left for each skip, the Canadians have access to that rock at the back. The question is here, do they make sure of that, Don? Do they try to draw behind those guards out in front and steal one? I think at this stage, they'd, they're about to make sure of the fact that Norway can get no more than one. Lukowicz, very pensive as he heads back to the hack for his final rock. Well, the Eddie Lukowicz has got a choice here. He would l dearly love to get this rock right in that area there. And there would be a good chance that he could steal a point because the rocks do not curl in there, and to take it out would be very difficult. And I think that's exactly what he's calling. And this is a big, big gamble on Lukowicz's part, Don, because if he doesn't get it in there, he's going to allow Norway the opportunity to maybe get two points. And I think that's what the big discussion is down at the other end. We'll see Chernoff talking to Dale Johnson, and... Probably just reassuring him that, boy, we have to get it in here. Well, they know it's getting late. This is the seventh end. They know they've got to uh, steal an end along the way here to offset this Norwegian advantage with last rock. And here is Lukowicz right now, evidently going for the outturn draw in behind those guards and ignoring the one rock in the 12 foot. You know, Canada can afford to give up one here, but they certainly can't afford to give up two. This is a big, big gamble by Lukowicz. It's just a question of they want to get it by those guards as tight as possible. Tighter the better. His weight is good. It's just a question of he's going to get it by the guards. He's well by the guard. Oh, he's got a super looking shot on if it stops. He's oh, back a little bit too deep in behind the T-line. He's under some cover there. He'll leave a challenging shot for Surum. He's there lying one. But if Norway can play this just correctly, they could still get two. Well, Don, you notice that rock of Lukowicz is past the guards, maybe by about two inches. And then stopped curling. And then started curling. And see the line, he can maybe see a corner of it. And the rock will do all its curling from the hog line in. So the key for Christian on this shot is that he can just play back ring weight only. Any more, the rock will ride that center line and he'll miss it. 
Or if it starts to curl at the hog line, all those guards will be a menace to them as well. Here it is, last shot of the seventh end. He has to be very, very careful. You see the way he released it. He's just playing quiet weight. He threw it a little bit inside. And they jump on it to make sure it gets past those Oh, he's all by. He's got a lot of weight, though. Well, oh, it's starting to move over now. Is he going to get it? He's got some of it, but he rolls away. He gets just one. So Norway gets the one after all. The gamble by Eddie Lukowicz did not backfire on him. It's a single point to make it 4-2 Norway after 7 in. So we have the United States and Sweden in a 5-3 USA lead right now. They're down to the final three. Here's Bobby Nichols with last rock playing his first. Bobby Nichols is trying to get a roll on that Swedish rock in the forefoot. Well, he's throwing a lot of weight. I don't think he's going to save his shooter. Oh, it may dig in over there. Does way over under cover in the 12 foot. But there's uh, enough out in front for the Swedish skip perhaps to utilize and draw on behind. Well, there's no way he can make contact with that rock that Nichols just threw and rolled over on the side of the 12 foot. So Schaefer is just going to play the straight draw and hope to tuck it around the long, long guard out in front. Maybe and get it into the 8 foot. The same situation is facing Schaefer as faces Lukowicz. He cannot afford to give up two here. He gives up two, he goes four points down, uh, playing the eighth in, and it's getting very, very sticky for him. He has to get this rock in, Don, around that guard. Get a little bit of protection. Taking a lot of ice. A lot of ice, and he's got a lot of weight. They're oh, brushing he... it, but it seems to have enough to get there. Oh, he's well, well by that guard, too. He's passed that guard by a good two and a half feet. Now it's starting to move in there. Comes back just on the tee line, in behind it. I don't think he's totally buried. Well, even if he is buried, Don, the way that rock curled at the end, there's a lot of room for uh, Bobby Nichols to go by. Nichols wants to get a good chunk of it, ease it out. Stick around for two that might just put this game away to give him a four-point lead. He's in the seventh end. Of course, the key for Bobby Nichols on this shot is his weight. You see that rock is partially behind that long guard away out in front. But the rock does a lot of curling from that hog line in. You'll see, you can see about half of it. So he'll be playing maybe about half weight just to tap it back and get his two points. Power of concentration. He just thrown it nice and quiet. They jumped on it right away. They're going to have to go with this one. Boy, they're really sweeping it, Don. Is he going to get by? Boy, it's going to be close. No, he's on the front. Just touching the front. And there it goes. Too far back. Sweden has made a big steal here in the seventh end. Nichols going for two. Gives up one. And that's a key steal for the Swedes, who now trail just by a single point at 5-4 after 7 ends. Once again, down to dog. Mr. Curling, Ken Watson, is the man standing with me. I'm sure most curling fans across the country recognize him. The 1936, 42, and 49 Briar winner. And the man who started this World Curling Championship with the Scotch Cup way back in 1959. How did this all develop, and did you envision the day, Ken, that it would be as powerful in the band as it is now. No, I don't think Don would ever thought it would reach these proportions. This is tremendous. But the Winnipeg Committee, I don't uh, ask for any part in this. I've done a tremendous job. And they're going to set an attendance record. They certainly will. They'll go over the 100,000 mark. Back in 1959, when Ernie Richardson went over to Scotland, I think you were organizer, uh, committee chairman, ticket chairman. I think you even carried the bags, didn't you? Just about everything. <laughs> but it was worth it. This is quite a match between Canada and Norway, and it's amazing how in the last few years the Europeans have developed their game. Well, some of the Canadians are responsible for that. We've been shipping them over there to teach them. Now they're beating us at our own game. Maybe Ray Turnbull, Wally Ursula, and Don Dugan, and a few others at best watch out. They may reverse the trend and start sending instructors over here. 
Ken Watson, Mr. Curling in Canada, and congratulations, by the way, on receiving the Elmer Freetag Award the other evening for your contribution to the sport. We'll be back with the eighth end right after this. Nobody's got it like the mystique of Grand Prix. Personal luxury infused with the pure enjoyment of driving. It's something you can really feel. Grand Prix has it, a sense of class in a car that begs to be driven. And at a cost far less than you might imagine. Grand Prix. You got it, Pontiac. True midsize. Sound thinking surrounded by sensational styling. A trim new shape compared to last year's Le Mans, but with more head and leg room. And room for six. Le Mans, the most scientifically designed road car in Pontiac history. You got it, Pontiac. A second for Canada, Dale Johnson playing his last rock of this end, and uh, with last rock in it, the eighth. It's gamble time again for Chernoff and Lukowicz. And they're just playing quietly into the house, hoping to save all the rocks they can. This one a little firm, bumps it back. A Norwegian stone to the forefoot, but it does leave a problem for Christian Surum as to what to do about it. On the top of this end, uh, Norway drew one in the house, the one that's on the forefoot now, and Canada threw up the uh, four corner guards and they ran three of them off the only one they left was the one on the right hand side well if he does uh, what he indicates right here uh, successfully this i think could this could be is, a problem for canada this is a this is a pretty big gamble by norway because if he doesn't get this uh, guard on perfectly there's uh it could cause him a lot of trouble because canada can always uh, raise their own onto that norwegian rock that's in the forefoot Morten Surum. Well, he's kind, of, he's kind of concerned about this call. Now Christian maybe is going to change his mind and play the takeout. And that's exactly what he's going to do. And I think that's the right call, Doug. He's got to hit this on the inside. Well, even if he kills his back one, it's not a bad shot. As long as he maybe just... He, what he doesn't want to do, of course, is hit a two-clutch on the outside. Well, this is going to be over on the inside, all right. He's got it. And the shooter is just off. Well, that was very close to being just a great shot because if he could have kept a shooter on the corner, boy, it changes the whole complexion of the end for Canada. This Canadian team has been struggling ever since the Norwegians got two in the second end to take the lead. They've been in charge by one or two points the rest of the way. Right now it is two points as we play the eighth end, as you see, 4-2 for Norway. Don, I don't think it's uh, so much that the Canadian team is struggling. I just think the Norwegian team is just playing a very, very strong game and aggressive. They aren't missing. They're making the shots they have to make. And that's what puts the Canadians in a position of scrambling. Because the Norwegians aren't going to give them anything. Here's Mike Chernoff. He'll be trying to duplicate the freeze. As you know, when you're down to playing freezes, you're into the toughest shots in the entire game. Well, freezes and guards are two of the toughest shots in curling, and they have to be so ever exacting. Mike looks a little bit strong. Well, they haven't laid a brush to it yet. Now, they're starting to move it a bit. Maybe they're they thinking of bumping it all the way off if they can, but it'll stop back straddling the 12 foot, and the Canadian rock is exposed at the head of the four, a shot rock. So no backing left for Canada after Chernoff's rock. So, and I said earlier that Canada was having difficulty getting the rocks in the right position, and that's exactly what's happening. Now, with that attempted freeze, he's bumped that rock behind the corner guard. Norway hits this one on the nose. Canada's going to have to change their thinking on this whole end. Morton Surum. Well, he's going to get the roll behind the guard. No, right on the nose. Uh, didn't move much for him, so he's in the open there, and just about the same spot on the eighth foot at the front. The Canadians are playing for two count with last rock, if they can pick up a pair here in the eighth end. And <laughs> there's the support Lukowicz and company are getting. They haven't got time to look up. Their eyes are on the ice. Eddie Lukowicz is holding the broom in the center of that rock that's just in front of the forefoot. 
But I think the shot they're playing, Don, is just to come around and draw to that one at the back. Now, I don't know if they come right up to that rock, whether they'd be shot. But they're playing out all stops. They're really gambling to get more than one point here. Well, that's what they're in the position of having to play some extremely difficult shots. Very demanding shots. Without much room for error. They have to get this one in. Well, he's well by that guard. It's just a matter of is it going to curl around that front Norwegian stone? Looks pretty good. They want to get it deeper, though. He's found the forefoot, but it's open. It's still a tricky rock to remove unless they utilize their own second shot. You know, he, he played the uh, very quiet draw away to take up time and curling down. You play the takeout down there. There isn't much room to play around. Well, you can see that rock is half buried. And if he hits what he can see, then he's just going to drive it on his own at the back. He gets a little bit thin, of course. He's got that guard out in front, which could bother him. Well, you saw the draw of uh, Chernoff's earlier. It took a long, long time to curl by that guard. As a matter of fact, just in front of the house, it looked like he was going to chip it. So what does the takeout do there? Well, he's just going to have to just get by this guard right out in front and just play quiet, wait, hope to the inside and uh, get a little bit of a roll. That was a good shot by Mike Chernoff. It changes the complexion for a moment at least of this the eighth end. It's 4-2 for Norway. Here's the skip who's curled so well today at 89% so far. Christian Sorob. Oh boy, that rock is going to have to curl. He may be on his own. I think he's going to hit his own. You see the extra weight there holds it up. Kennedy has left the shot. The Canadians have two rocks to the Norwegians, one. So Canada finally gets a break here in the eighth end. Okay, there's two schools of thought, Don. Lukovic would like to get the rock just in this general area. And if he does get in there at area, there's a good chance he could get three. Or he could play conservatively and go over here and lie his two and take his two points and go on to the next end. Well, as you're aware, the draws take their time in coming over. And he wouldn't want to be exposed or out a bit to give a possible double opportunity. Well, that's the, that's the danger of this shot. If he doesn't get it in around that guard and partially hidden, there is a chance he could set up the double. You'll see the ice that Chernoff is giving him. He's not giving him much ice. And if he gets it in there, boy, there's a good chance Canada could score three here. It's a very fine shot because of the limited ice he is giving. If it ever starts to curl, that guard is going to be a problem. Here's Eddie Lukowicz's first rock of the eighth end. Well, he's well out there. You see Schindel waving his arm, saying he's hot. That rock has got a lot of curling to do, Don. He's well, well by that guard. He's going to be in the open. Look at that rock straight. It'll start to curl a little bit now. Now it's starting to move. He's lying too, but they are close together. An impossible double range for Christian Sarup. Now yeah, they're down, as I say again, to playing these fine, fine, delicate shots, Don. And uh, if you don't get exactly what you're after, it could backfire. Well, you'll see that Christian can see that full, full rock. And if he hits what he can see right on the nose, he's going to make a double. He's not too concerned about taking that one out of the back. He just wants to make the double. This is a big shot for Norway. If he makes this double, boy, he can lift his team. Oh, he's throwing it inside. They're going to have to go on it. Oh, he's got a great looking shot. If they, yes, he's going to make the double. A fantastic shot. Christian Sarum is left lying free. Donnie, it appeared to me that when he let it go, he rolled it inside. But great, great brushing kept it up. And you'll see he makes great contact with that first rock, which is the key. He can hit it on the nose or just a fraction on the outside, but he hits it just perfect. 
and not only that, drives it by his own at the back. So once again, Christian Sorum is forcing Canada to take one. And I tell you, the situation facing Eddie Lukowicz is not a very good one because he cannot afford to roll with this rock. He must hit it right on the nose. Look at the broom Chernoff's giving him right on the edge of the rock. And if he makes it exactly the way he hopes to, he'll still get one and still trail. He's got to make this shot to stay alive. Chernoff yells, whoa, he's well out there. His weight may save him. Oh, it's not coming over. Is he going to get it? He's Sick coming enough. a no. little bit, but not very much. It's this could be the ball game right here. No, sir, he's going to give up two. Norway leads at six to two with only two ends to play. The Norwegians are a couple of ends away from reaching the Silver Broom final. And they can thank this man with his arms. Up in the air, Christian Sorum with a great double takeout that got his team out of trouble. Once again, let's go down and join Don Whitman. Well, a fellow who's relaxing today but is going to be busy tomorrow describing the championship game back to viewers of BBC Scottish Television, an old friend, Alan Weeks. Alan, this is an exciting match. Very exciting indeed, John. I think the Norwegians are playing tremendously well, aren't they? They certainly are. Alan, you've made a lot of trips over to this side of the pond in the last year or so for first the Olympic Games, and then you came over for the uh, Skate Canada competition, the World Championships, and uh, then you're going to be back for the Commonwealth Games in Edmonton. That's right, and possibly again in the Skate Canada in Vancouver. This, I think, is my year as far as Canada's concerned. Mind you, I was in Montreal when the war started. I was in Montreal when the war finished. A Canadian was best man at my wedding. He was a hockey player. He came from Verdun in Montreal. So it's, it's been part of my life, I think, Canada. Alan, well, we hope you have a big audience tomorrow. It's a pity the Scots aren't in there, as far as you're concerned. It really is. I think they played very well, but I think they're missing that man. Thank you very much, Alan Weeks. We have some action over there in that Swedish-U.S. game. Let's go there now. We sure there now. We sure do, Don. Here's Bobby Nichols with his last rock of this eighth end. He's got a tough shot. There's a corner freeze of the Swedish stone that is shot against his own. Nichols is going after it, wants to catch it on the inside. He's got a guard to clear. They're pounding it to make sure he gets by, but I don't know. He's on it. Sweden's going to get another one. And they are into a tie after eight ends at 5-5. He's stolen points on the last couple of ends and have pulled even now with the United States. We've got two dramatic situations unfolding here in the Winnipeg Arena this afternoon as we're down to the final two ends in regulation play of these two sudden-death semifinal games. The U.S. and Sweden 5-5 and Norway with a big steal of two ahead of Canada by a score of 6-2. So the culmination of this afternoon is coming up. We'll bring it to you live from Winnipeg. We return in just a moment. An old soldier should never rust away. Not when you've got Tremclad rust paint to dress up metal that gets rusty and crusty. So in practically no time, he's bright and shining again. No wonder Tremclad is Canada's number one selling rust paint. Regal, the down-to-earth dream car from Buick. A little science. Trimmer on the outside, yet somehow larger inside with more headroom, legroom, even more trunk space than last year. A little magic. Also available as a sport coupe with the wizardry of a turbocharged V6 engine. And all the traditional excellence you've come to expect in a Buick. Yeah, I want one. Fantastic. The new Regal, the real stuff that dreams are made of. Canada, as you can see, is in deep trouble here in the ninth end, trailing Norway 6-2. to two. And all the stops are being pulled out now by Chernoff and Lukovic. They want every rock left in play, dropping them short of the rings, but the Norwegians, again, have not been missing the key shots. It's done an interesting thing. Uh, after eight ends, team statistics, uh, Canada is curling at 80%, while Norway is curling at 69%. Actually, the Canadian team is out curling them, but um, I think the big thing is the skip for the Norwegian has made some just super, super shots. Well, after eight ends, they have uh, Christian Sorum down to 77%. He was as high as 86, 89 before, and I can't recall what he's missed since then. He must have a very tough scorekeeper behind that I sheet. think so. They always scored you very hard in Winnipeg, didn't they? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Interesting, the front end of Canada, uh, 
Roddy Schindel's curling 88%, and Dale Johnston is curling 94%. Alas, 6-2 is the only scoring statistic that is important right now. And it is in favor of Norway. Sweden and the United States are tied 5-5. Both the games in the ninth end. Here's Dale Johnson of Canada. If Canada's going to have any kind of a chance to win this game, Don, they must get three in this end. If they only get two, they're two down coming home without last rock, and I wouldn't hold much hope for them winning, but they must get three. Again, this rock is not going to be under cover. Hanging out there, Johnson's got nice weight back near the tee line, but it is open. The interesting thing is they've never played over that far on that side of the sheet, and I guess it's kind of a guess for a churn up as to how the rock is going to react, and that's why they're not bearing, and that seems to be their problem throughout the game, that they cannot put the rock in the place that they want it to force uh, Norway to make a tough, tough shot. On the nose, he stays there. This Norwegian team that had a struggle into a playoff or fourth place with Scotland now is just a couple of ends away from going on to their first ever silver broom final. And Canada in extreme danger right now of having missed six silver broom championships in a row. In fact, even the last one was kind of questionable with a kick rock in Garmisch Park and Kirken. Bob Labonte slipping, and a controversy ensued that brought about an extra end. And Oris Melischuk went on to win that for Canada. But that was a long time ago. Don, why, what's your theory on Canada not winning the Silver Broom for maybe six years in a row? There's no one theory, but uh, one of them is that uh, you can see by the determination on the faces of the Europeans that they are, uh, if not more serious than the Canadians, certainly it means so much more to them. They're, they're really intense about curling. Even a, a friendly social game becomes a little grim after a while. And that high degree of competitiveness perhaps has to be reinstilled across Canada. Well, I think my theory is that they really work at their games summer and winter. You know, they uh, do a lot of exercise, running, and uh, they even have sweeping lessons and uh, sweeping practice. So they're in the game all the way. Well, the Canadian team, uh, I feel, or Canadian teams curl far, far too much in uh, I agree. Big cash fields, and I think maybe they might just burn themselves out to uh, uh, come drier time or world championship time. That is a factor, too. And, of course, the confidence factor, the letdown maybe after winning a briar, coming on to play in a silver broom a couple of weeks later, it could be a little anticlimactic for some. And, of course, let's not forget, the Europeans have improved tremendously in the last five years. And as you see, this Norwegian right. team is fired up, and they are not missing, not giving Canada a break. Right. They're down to their final three rocks, the Canadians in this end. They trail by four. Mike Chernoff with the draw, trying to use that solitary guard out in front for cover. And this run's going to be in behind a little bit better. <laughs> he has some measure of protection with that one. Well, I mentioned that the press table here is the most enormous I have ever seen. And you can count them. There are half a dozen rows, and it covers the entire width of this Winnipeg Arena seating area. As media from all over the world converge in Winnipeg for the Silver Broom. Well, there are a few Go Canada Go chants still being heard, but they are not quite as loud and as boisterous as they were a couple of ends ago as Lukowicz and Chernoff are in desperate trouble here in the ninth end, trailing 6-2. to two. Christian Sorum can see about a half of that rock, but it's a tricky, tricky spot. If he overthrows it, the rock will run very straight. Oh, and he's throwing big, big weight at it, and they're not laying a brush to it. I think he's missed this one. If so, it'll be one of the very few today. No, he's maybe going to catch a corner. Ah, yes, he's got a piece. It's gone. Canada down to two remaining rocks, trailing by four in the ninth end. That has to be very, very disheartening for the Canadian team. You know, he threw big, big weight at it, and he just catches a corner of it. A little hard to believe, Don, that an opening day, Canada defeated Norway 14 to 3, isn't it? Well, of course, that's opening game. Uh, you know, I'm sure the Norwegians were a little bit nervous, as was the Canadian team. Uh, as a matter of fact, the Canadian team came out very, very strong. They made all their shots, were getting all their rolls, and uh, really the score wasn't indicative of the play. But Norway certainly come on strong during the course of the week. Again, trying to utilize that guard out in front. 
Staying right off this one by Lukowicz. It is out there. It looks to be a little on the heavy side. They're not touching it at all. The hog line. Well, not only is a little bit heavy, Don, he's well, well by that guard, so he's not going to be buried. Unless it does a lot of curling at the end. It'll stick around, hopefully, back in the 12-foot. No, it's no, out of the ring. I think it's off. Yes, it appears to be off the ring. Don, just an update on the statistics after eight ends. Uh, Sweden is at 82%, while USA is at 71% as a team total. They're in a 5-5 tie in the ninth end. And Christian Sorum is playing that rock. I don't think it's in. It could be questionable. He wants to make sure. He's just playing a draw right down to it. He has a lot of weight. He's certainly not going to be short on this draw. He's got a long way to come. He's starting to make a move now. I don't know whether he's going to hang around. Yes, he is. No. Is it in? Again, awfully close on that back line. Well, Lukowicz really hasn't got uh, much hope in this end now. Okay, what do you do? You take one and uh, go down three and give up last rock. You uh, flank it and remain four down with last rock. Uh, frankly, well, I don't think it matters. No, that's right. No matter what happens, you're not in a very good position here, whether you take one or you flank it. The key was the eighth end. When Lukowicz missed his last rock and allowed Norway to steal two. Lukowicz is going to take this point. Hoping that the Norway team falls apart in the last end and to maybe steal three points. I'm not sure he's there. No, he's not. He's going to pull up short. Is he or is, is he going to make it? No, he's not. He's short. Now, what about the one at the back? That's very, very close. It certainly uh, remained in play and was left there, rightfully so, but is it on the ring? That uh, could be the put-away point right there. If it's good, they move it off, so obviously it was not on the ring. Small consolation for a Canadian team, though, that remains four down with last rock in the 10th end coming up, 6-2 to two for Norway. So... The real battle now looms between Sweden and the United States as they're playing in the ninth end in a 5-5 tie. And this is Tommy Schaefer without last rock, his first rock at the end. A couple of guards out in front. Schaefer playing the outturn draw behind the rock on the right of center. He's well by the guard, Don. He's got a lot of curling to do. Starting to make a move now. Now it's really starting to come over. Is he going to be staying in the ring, though? That's the question. Well, Nichols will take it back to the 12-foot, straddling the edge of the eight. It's partially open back there, and he's lying one. Depending on how this United States-Sweden game comes out, this could be the first old Scandinavian final in the history of the Silver Broom tomorrow at the Winnipeg Arena. Bobby Nichols had command of this game. He had a 5-2 to two lead. And then the Swedes crept up on it. They got one with last rock in the sixth. They stole the seventh. They stole the eighth. A couple of last rock misses by Nichols on hits. And it's 5-5 right now. Well, that's right, Don. Nichols had a chance to go four up to, in the seventh end, and he missed. And that made it 5-4. And then he had another chance to get another two points, and he missed again. So Bobby Nichols uh, missing has kept Sweden in this game. Nichols first rock. Right down that center line, now it starts to curl a bit off that. His weight is pretty good, though. It'll hold the line. I don't know whether he's going to save his shooter, though, Don. He's got to get a good hunk of that rock. No. So just the two left out in front now with uh, the two rocks remaining in N9. Well, you know, that indicates that Bobby Nichols has kind of been struggling with the ice. If, uh, you know, he's had a couple of chances to put this game away, and he's uh, missed, and he's hit and rolled out. So that means that he's struggling a bit. They had him off to a pretty good start on the scoring with 100%. They still got him up after eight ends at 83%, and yet he's made a couple of key misses on takeouts, and uh, the percentages don't really count. It depends on the ones you miss. Well, here's the Swedish Junior Curling Championship rink. Uh, they graduated, of course, into a world championship rink, skipped by Ragnar Camp, and they, of course, will be in the CBC Curling Classic. 
which we played in Moncton in a couple of weeks and see next fall on CBC television as the reigning European champion. Well, Tom Schaefer's got another good draw, but he, he just can't seem to bury that rock. It'll be, I think, buried in the pile at the back. That's just off the rings, but perhaps still in play, straddling that back line. I don't think it's in play, Don. Bill Strum has walked over the far left-hand side of the sheet and holding the broom down beside the divider, so that's an indication that he's going to throw it through. That, of course, would enable the Americans to retain last rock in the 10th end at a 5-5 tie. The Canadians, meantime, will get back to them momentarily or struggling, but they are fast running out of rocks. Throwing it through is Bobby Nichols to flank it, and he will have last rock in the 10th uh, end coming up in just a moment or two. But, of course, the situation remains critical for Canada as the Canadians are down to their final five rocks, and they trail by four. The Norwegians have one out in front on the right, and the shot rock is in the four-foot ring on the left. And Canada's freezing to everything in sight. They're just getting down to rock, bumping the back, leaving space for Norway to take it out. This is Dale Johnson, the second. Don, they've made some good freezes, but Norway's made some great hits, so. He decided to draw in behind this guard on the right. Just to get something on the ring, they've got to save all the rocks that they can. This one's coming back a little deep, but it's going to be in the house, back of the 12-foot. And it'll have some protection back there, as the Norwegians, of course, will be going after it with Canada now having one in the house and only four remaining, trailing by four. They have to make this hit and one more, and Norway will advance to the final. Oh, and he's got it. So the best Canada can hope for in an almost hopeless situation now is a tie, and let's face it, that's not going to happen. The Norwegians simply are not missing. They have been very, very steady all afternoon. They've made some big shots. In fact, they have uh, curled beyond the expectations of many. Although, Don, uh, I know you agreed at the outset this was going to be a very rough day for Canada. It turned out to be a lot rougher than even we expected. Well, I was a little bit leery of the Norway team. When they got into the playoffs, they played Jimmy Sanderson last night. They're a very, very capable rink. And I was just a little bit nervous about Norway playing uh, Canada. I, I know that they're very capable, and I... If Chernoff come, came up big and Lukowicz, I thought that uh, Canada would win, but uh, that has not been the case. Well, Chernoff has to place this one in the rings just to stay alive in this game. Six to two for Norway. Mike Chernoff is just going to play the freeze to that Norwegian rock in the forefoot. He has a lot of weight. They haven't laid a brush to it. That's got a bit of curling to do. Now it comes. He'll set the Norwegian stone back on the edge of the 8-foot near the 12. He's wide open. And the third for the Norwegian team, Morten Sura, may have the honor right here of putting the cap on the semifinal game against Canada. If he takes this one out, it is all over. And this will be the sixth straight year that Canada has not won the silver broom, Don, and all risks with this young fellow's take out here. And I'll tell you, he's very close to making a nose hit. He has to drive it by the own. They raise their hands. It's all over. That's no. the jubilant Norwegian team that has beaten Canada 6-2, to two, eliminating the Canadians from Silver Broom play, as Don said, for a sixth year in succession. Norway moves on to the world final tomorrow for the first time in history. And a very polite and knowledgeable crowd here in Winnipeg gives the Norwegians a standing ovation. And they're all standing on their feet, Don, and Norwegians are waving to them. It's a great win for Norway. You know how 
The medicine hat rink must feel, but they are gone from the silver broom. We'll be back to it, though, in just a moment. Mid-size Buick Century, the contemporary alternative in family transportation. A little science. A totally new interpretation of function in a family car, beautifully expressed in the Buick tradition. A little Simplicity of lines redefined in size for an ease of maneuverability in city traffic, with abundant space for passenger comfort, even more leg and headroom than last year. It's what we need. It's what they want. The new mid-size Century, a Buick like you had never seen before. That's the dream house. And I'm the builder. I'm even putting up the siding myself using Abitibi siding. It's pre-finished hardboard and very easy to work with. That finish is rock hard. Abitibi siding is a system with all the right pieces. So it goes up quickly and it looks great. Look, if I can put up Abitibi siding, anybody can. Abitibi siding. It's so beautifully simple. Well, that is a very disheartened, dejected Canadian team that now leaves the Winnipeg Arena again. They will get a hand from the crowd here. They gave it a good shot. Ran into a real buzz car. The person of the Christian Sorum rink from Norway. And they walk out side by side. Here again, another standing ovation coming up at the Winnipeg Arena. Well, I know how they must feel, but they're just great curlers. They're great ambassadors for Canadian curling. I know how they Christian, feel. Christian, congratulations. A, a tremendous victory for your Norwegian rink. You curled very, very well. Well, thank you for that. It's very good for us. You do felt a lot of pressure, I'm sure, when you stepped on the ice after losing 14-3 in first round play. Well, I really don't know. We had anything, everything to win, nothing to lose, really. So we wasn't so nervous, I guess, as Canada. Have you ever curled as well? Well, no, I think that this is the best we've ever curled. Yeah. Obviously, the key shot was that double you executed in the eighth end, the double yeah. takeout. Yeah, I guess that was what really made it, yeah. You fellas had a lot of pressure on you. You had to survive that playoff with uh, Scotland last night. You won that one 4-1. This game started out the same way. It looked as though it was going to be a very low-scoring game. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was, uh, what shall we say, Canada didn't start to chance in the beginning. I have expected them to play much more close, so much more draw but they play the open game and we like that tell you you've won the hearts of the fans in this building haven't you i don't know it looks like it <laughs> they gave you a tremendous ovation upon the completion of that game now we're going to find out in just a moment who your opponent's going to be tomorrow once again christian sorum congratulations on your victory this afternoon okay let's go over to that united states swedish match okay don on the background you heard you talked to christian the the applause followed the canadians every step until they finally went out of view under the ramp here to the dressing room in the Winnipeg Arena. So the fans most appreciative of what they endeavor to do. And uh, the United States and Sweden at a 5-5 tie here in the 10th end. Last rock belongs to the Americans. And uh, it appears as though the American second, Tom Locken, Tom Locken is uh, pulled a muscle or something. He's got a cramp, perhaps it is. He's just walking it off, Don. Uh, he sat down in the hack and jumped up right away. and. There's definitely something wrong with his leg. One of the officials now is going to come over and consult and see if he needs any. He's going to go to the dressing room. Any medical room. aid. Well, this um, is an unparalleled situation for the Silver Broom, certainly in the playoffs. With the game being delayed when the next scheduled shooter has to go off with an injury. I know it happened years ago in Ontario in an Ontario Consoles Championship. The game was delayed for about an hour and a half when uh, Bill Kreber, the skip, developed a cramp as he was in the hack to throw his final rock in the last end. Well, and so the ice, of course, toughens up and changes with the heat and the humidity and the crowds. And uh, that could very well be the situation here. Tom Locken has gone off for medical aid and all is in a holding position right now. Well, it's exceptionally tough on uh, the Swedish team, Don. Let's check in right now and find out what the situation is with Don Whitman. Well, standing here with me is Bob Christman. Bob, what's the problem? Uh, he popped his knee when he got down in the hack. It uh, popped out on him, and uh, he has a hard time getting down the hack. Is this something that has happened before? No, not to my knowledge with Tommy. I'm the only one with a bad knee. <laughs> you use that sliding bat. Is that because you have a bad knee? Yes, I've had four operations on my knee, and uh, this is the only way I can slide. So he's gone in for a little medical treatment. How long a delay are you permitted? Uh, I think just a couple minutes, and then I'll make a decision if he's going to throw or 
I suppose I'd have to throw his rock. Or Strum would. It's a rather critical time for this to happen. Uh, you don't like to see anyone injured at any time, but particularly not at this stage of a game. That's correct. Were you surprised at the result over there on the other sheet with Norway knocking off Canada? I was very surprised. Very surprised. Were you taking a glance over there as the game was going on? Yeah, every once in a while. <laughs> okay, we also have Ray Turnbull coming back out of the dressing room. He is going to now consult with the officials here to determine just what is going to happen. Ray is the official umpire, and he is conferring with Doug Maxwell, the man in charge of uh, Silver Broom play. And uh, Bob, while uh, they are conferring and debating as to what is going to take place, I guess, like most everyone else here, you're tremendously impressed with the crowds that have jammed this arena for every draw. I sure am. Uh, this is the first time I've ever been to a world, and I was just awed by it all when I saw the people, first time in here. Uh, wonderful participation from the Winnipeg people here and all over the world. Well, you've got quite a cheering contingent here as well. And yeah, we've got about 50 people from our hometown, plus quite a few other people from the States. Bob, this match with the Swedes, uh, it looked like you fellows were in control for a while. Uh, it's, it's been a tough one. Sure has. We've had a couple key misses that uh, Billy said the rock jumped a little on Bobby or uh, we'd be in real comfortable position. Now we're fighting for our lives. Well, uh, you've uh, still got the upper hand. You still have the advantage of last rock, and that's important going home. Which it certainly is. Well, Bob, I see that uh, Ray Turnbull has now just uh, gone back to the dressing room, and uh, Doug Maxwell is now going down to confer with Bob Nichols. And perhaps uh, we'll let you get down there and see if you can find out just what is happening. Thanks very much for taking time to talk with us. Okay, thank you. Bob Chrisman, and now back upstairs to Don Chevrier and Don Duguid. All right, Don, we'll have the situation clarified hopefully in a moment. As I say, they haven't had to face this problem, Don, before in a silver broom in a critical situation in the 10th end when one of the players about to throw comes up with a sudden injury. And so Chuck Hay now is conferring with Doug Maxwell about this situation as to what the ruling will be as to how long they're going to give Tom Lockin of the United States to possibly continue or to declare himself out of the game. Uh, Don, I think uh, I'll just fascinate a bit. I think if he cannot return to the game that they'll have to ask the, the lead man, Bob Crispin, to throw the rock rather than the third Bill Strum. They can order that, can they? They can demand that he uh, withdraw. Oh. Well, if he can't continue, if physically he can't continue, he can't continue. So they'll have to find somebody else to throw the rock, and I think that responsibility would fall on the shoulders of the lead, Bob Christman. Well, here's Ray Turnbull. He's just come from the American dressing room. He's passing on some advice to Doug Maxwell as to what the situation with Tom Lockett is. Just to recap, he was getting into the hack, getting set to throw. He suddenly stood straight up, walked back, tried to walk what we thought was a cramp or uh, muscle spasm off. Apparently that knee of his is locked. And uh, as Bob Christman told Don Whitman, it hasn't happened before. What a time for it to happen here in the 10th end of a 5-5 tie in the Silver Broom. The Got interesting it. thing, Don, if he does come back, you know, he's got to be leery about sitting in that hack and throwing the rock, you know, that the rock may pop out again. Well, let's see if uh, Don Whitman, who's at ice level, can uh, tell us any more about it. Well, Don, let's uh, find out what the reaction of Frederick Ritterstad of the Swedish rink is. Uh, this delay in the action, is it good or bad, or how do you feel about it? Does it affect you mentally at all? No, I don't think so. I think it's good for us. We're actually getting a rest. We've had a lot of hard sweeping for the past past four ends. This has been a very tough match for you. Oh, yeah, it's been quite tough. You've been fighting from behind all the way? Yeah, well, that's what we're used to. You had a great match with the Americans uh, in round robin play. You won 9 7, a couple of great, superb shots by your skip Thomas Schaefer in that final end. Yes, we, we were lucky at that time, and we hope we'll be lucky also in this 10th end. You were kind of hoping, I think, that you could have picked up a point in that ninth end, weren't you? Uh, well, it didn't matter really, because um, we had to play this last end the same way anyway. We had to play like stealing it. So we still have to play this end like stealing it anyway. What about the result over in the other sheet? Were you surprised? No, not at all. I told earlier yesterday that the Norwegian would beat the Scotch and that they would beat the Canadian, uh, Canada today because one week ago, Canada beat Norway 14-3. It's still in their head. It's very, very easy. And, and Norwegian been playing, climbing upwards all the week. And, uh, well, Canada still play good, good curling. Is there some pressure on you fellows to repeat, seeing as how Ragnar Camp won the World Championship last year in Karlstad? No, it's not a pressure. They play their game, we play our game. The crowds here have really responded, haven't they? Oh, yeah, they're great. They're really terrific. They're really terrific. Frederick, thanks for talking with us. I think Tom Larkin is going to be back and able to throw his final stone. We'll let you get back to the action. Thank you. Thank you. There he is. He looks to be grimacing a little bit as he gets into the hack to test that knee. To remind you to stay tuned for the Dinah Shore Winter Circle Golf Tournament from Palm Springs in California. That's next on CBC Television. But next is the outcome of this semifinal between Sweden and the United States right here in Winnipeg.
Clocken is the one rock remaining. And he has it away. Oh, and he's the rock that a lot of curling do if he's going to make contact. He has a corner of it. And just slides it off the left-hand side. So he gets a round of applause. He made a partial hit coming back from the dressing room. And uh, it appears as though he's going to stick around and hopefully sweep the remaining four American rocks. Very stiff-legged there in the left leg as he tries to work out that problem that occurred, as you saw, as he just sat on the hack a moment or two ago. All right, now for Sweden, here is Sati Oudman. Sweden is lying one. The Americans had last rock in the end. Crowd says, no, it looks heavy. This crowd here in Winnipeg calls almost every shot for sweepers. He looks a little bit strong, Don. It's no good at the back of the rings. He must be in front of that tee line. He's back in the 12 foot, but they are lying too. There's a possible long double for the Americans if Bobby Nichols chooses to go that way. The shooter now for the United States is third Bill Strum. Bobby Nichols is elected to play that rock on the right-hand side. The danger rock, Don, that I feel is the one that's just out in front of the house by about two feet, a little bit off center line, but that could prove a problem for uh, Bobby Nichols as the end progresses. He's going to have a shot of that double across the house. Now it's going to roll over in that direction and stop under the guard out in front and live shot rock in the eight foot. That guard, though, for the Americans is still a potentially dangerous one. As the Swedes, Tom Schaefer now indicates, will draw right there in behind the face of the American stone. Well, that's right. That guard out in front and the rock on the edge of the forefoot is actually to Sweden's advantage. Because if they can get one around there and kind of freeze it, it's going to make a difficult, difficult shot for Bob Nichols. Here's Oatman. It is 5-5. The Americans have last rock. And he's trying to draw behind that guard using the outturn. Oh, he's got a lot of weight. Boy, that rock has got a lot of curling to do. He could afford to be light and leave one out in front here potentially, now but he can't afford to, to be in. heavy. Here it comes. He's got what he wanted. That rock curled a long way in the last few feet. Don, that rock curled a good two and a half feet, and they never laid up room to it all the way down the ice. They've got shot completely under cover now, and a dilemma faces Bobby Nichols. Look where he is. He's still well past that guard. Now look at that rock. It just goes left angles here and makes contact with that shot. Boy, that rock curled a long, long way. First shot is Sweden. Second USA, third Sweden. They're going to try to play it from the intern side, around that guard, outside in. Bill Strum. Of course, Bill Strum's responsibility here, if he does not make contact with the shot, to run that front one off. He does not want to hit it on the nose, however. Now he's going to clean off the guard. And so it's open now, at least for Bobby Nichols. Nothing out in front, but the Swedes, I think, will move to rectify that situation with the first of two rocks by Tom Schaefer coming up. Sweden fell behind 5-2, to two, but came back with a single with last rock of the sixth and stole the seventh and the eighth. The ninth was blanked by Nichols, who was last rock here in the tenth, retired at five. And as you know, Canada has been beaten by Norway's Christian Sorum 6-2. to two. The Canadians for the sixth year in a row are out of the silver broom. And that is the only sour note, really, for people here in Winnipeg all week, Don. It's been a marvelous week. It would have been a perfect week had Canada gone all the way through, but that is not about to happen. Tom Schaefer, who played for Shellis Curious in 1973, now trying to skip his own team from Sweden into the final. Well, Tom Schaefer here, Don, wants to get that rock in front of the one that he has on the edge of the forefoot, but he would like to get it a little tighter to the rings. The tighter to the rings, the better, without going in the circles. See the broom that he's taking? He's taking about three inches over the center line, and that rock will do a lot of curling at the end. So it's a weight shot. He has a lot of weight. They're just keeping it clean. Now they're starting start to, to go, go now. Hard. Watch it move over. That's going to wind up as a pretty good guard for him. 
There it is. He has shut off the outturn side. There's some view to Nichols from the intern side. But not really much he can do with it because of the proximity of the Swedish shot stone to his own. We have three rocks left. Two for the Americans and one for Sweden. Bobby Nichols is doing a lot of gambling here. He wants to corner freeze it on the Sweden rock in the edge of the forefoot. A most interesting final end situation. Nichols has been unsuccessful in keeping it open with last rock. And he now is in a rough situation. That's how they stack up with that shot rock of Sweden's up near the forefoot completely under cover from the turn they're playing now. But it does curl quite a bit there. Well, he doesn't want it to curl too far either, Don. If he just gets by that guard, the rock will curl over too far and he'll still leave the Swedish rock shot. So he's got to make sure that he's into that four-foot area. Don't forget, those who follow the ladies' professional golf trail, Sandra Post has been leading after the second round in the Dinah Shore winner's circle. That's coming up next. We'll join it on CBC Television right after the Silver Brew. a hush comes right over the crowd. This has to be a very exacting shot by Bobby Nichols. Well, he laid it a little bit inside. They're going to have to go. He's got lots of weight. Fortunately, they're going to have to go to get it by. They've oh, it's starting. It. He's going to get by, I think. Is it going to curl too much for him, though? He moves it. And it's off the close. Oh, it's questionable who his shot's on. Did he push it far enough? I think the Swedish is shot. The, the Swedes Swede tap their rock to indicate they feel they have shot. He may not have moved it far enough. I don't think so, Don. He moved it into the fat part of the circle there. Our overhead camera, I think the Swedish rock is shot. And if they could be certain of that, they'll no doubt put a cap on it with a guard out in front and make it awfully rough for Bobby Nichols. Well, here is the overhead view. Uh, it does appear from that that the Swedish team has shot rock, although it is very, very close between the two. Don Chevrier, I yes. just spoke with Bo Kalman, and he said that he definitely thinks the Swedes do have the shot stone down there. That's the way it looks. Okay, the shot now is that if he can get a rock just in this general area here, even maybe a little more to the right-hand side and closer to the center line, he'll completely block off that forefoot. And Don Whitman said he thought the Swedish rock was shot. Well, boy, That's what you, the Swedish team thinks. You have to be correct in your assessment that it is shot rock because it has a great bearing on the one that he's going to throw now. He obviously feels he's got it. His last rock, Nichols with one remaining. Score tied at five. He certainly doesn't want to come in too deep with this one. And he wants to get it well in there. He doesn't want to leave it away out. Boy, that rock is going to be well out there. They're pounding it furiously to get it as far as they can. They wouldn't want to touch. Uh -oh, oh, he did. They did. He gave the shot. They brought it too far. They gave the United States shot. I don't think Bobby Nichols has to worry about his last rock. Well, they're going to have a look at it, Don, and that's bad, bad sweeping the by the Swedish team. The Swedes are beside themselves. Schaefer says it's all over. He won't throw his last rock. A oh. tremendous error in judgment on the part of Sweden has knocked them out of the silver broom. That's a tough way to lose. But they've lost it, conceding to the United States. It'll go down as a 6-5 to five U.S. victory until the final tomorrow. We'll have the Americans and the Norwegians battling for the 1978 Silver Brew. It has indeed been a strange afternoon here and an exciting one at the Winnipeg Arena. It sets it up tomorrow, Don Dugan, for the United States and Norway. That should be a great battle. Watch board at 1 Manitoba time and 2 Eastern time. And now for Don Dugan and Don Whitman, this is Don Chevrier saying, join us tomorrow. So long for now from Winnipeg. This is CBC.